Bones has a somewhat looser feel to it. Yeah, it's got an almost improvisational tone. Like TV from other dimensions has a... <laughs> There were some votes for some crab rave in the chat, so I had to oblige. We, of course, are going to start random day with some crab rave right here. Hopefully, everyone is hearing and seeing me. Let's go back to the main screen right now. Some crab rave. Let's get started with the morning. Hey, everybody. It is randomness day. Votes in the chat for crab rave. I was seeing those live. Is everyone seeing and hearing me? One of these days, I'll stop asking that at the very start of class. One of these days, I'll be like, hey, everything is working properly, but it is. Let's see, volume looks good right there. Some crab rave to start out the morning. And once points start, um, like once we start seeing them, <laughs> once we know points exist, we will, um, I'm gonna try something new right here. Get you guys hype in the morning right here for some stat nation. I really like, like the stat nation stuff. You guys came up with it. It's, see the thing is, is like, I wanna use it, but when people come up with stuff organically, what's up Cole, Coleman, sorry about that. So like, when you guys come up with it, you have the ownership of it. Like. This is our thing. Like our class, this mini term is stat nation. And then when I start, like if I ca start calling like the next class stat nation, they'll be like, I don't know about that. We're going to come up and then I'll, yeah, but we, you guys came up with it. It's organic from us. So that's what we like. Oh, thanks. Captain America right here. It's uh, I really like this shirt a lot. You know, um, what's his name? You know, what's so funny. This is a quick aside. Um, someone mentioned Green Lantern in the chat yesterday. And I didn't acknowledge it. Sorry about that. Ryan Reynolds played Green Lantern, and it was like, it was a movie. And then Ryan Reynolds went out and played Deadpool, and that, that was awesome. Chris Evans played uh, Human Torch, and that was a fantastic form movie, better than the, the newer one that came out. But um, then Chris Evans played Captain America, and that, that, man, he, perfect cap right there, perfect cap. And Deadpool was great, yeah, like, yeah, exactly. I know, and it's like, but Green Lantern can be really cool. Like, um, if you did like uh, John Stewart Green Lantern, or if you did like, um, what's the other guy? Kyle Rayner says his name. There's a, there's some pretty good ones, and hopefully Streamlabs. We'll give it another five minutes before I start questioning Streamlabs and saying, "What are you doing?" I was doing some adjustments today that shouldn't break it, but I might start looking in the background. Um, yeah, the last one, the last Fantastic Four was like. Eh. I'll tell you the truth. I didn't watch the whole thing. I started watching it, and I was like, this is interesting and not in a good way. So we're going to see if Streamlabs at 9.08, if it's not working, I'm going to be like, Streamlabs, what you doing? Get, 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 get to your job, Streamlabs. You have a job. Remember yesterday, I think some people were checking it, and all of a sudden it checked out on a person midway through the list. So I'll, I'll try to remember. Oh, yeah. Um, it was an 80. Great question right there. Um, did, they're making Deadpool 3. Oh, man. Deadpool 2 was good, but Deadpool 1 was awesome. Deadpool 2 was, like, fun. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, we were talking about that yesterday, is amazing. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is probably one of the best movies I've seen in the last forever. Um, but go watch Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse if you haven't. That was amazing. Miles Morales is top-tier Spider-Man. So um, check it out. He's Spider-Man. It's Just go watch it. Go watch it. Go watch Spider-Verse. So, um... Uh, it's only, it's two for the, yes, Streamlabs and Needy saw it. It is working now. So it literally took five or six, took five minutes or so. I don't understand. Um, and Gracie and everyone's right. So let's start talking. We're going to go a little bit on track right now. <laughs> hey, yeah, Streamlabs, I like that right there. So let's see. Who's going to want to be, okay, so how do I do it? So here's what we're checking right now. Well, let me talk about the test, the quizzes for a second. The average last night on the quizzes, now remember, I think the previous day we had like a 94 and then last night we had an 80, but this was, was it 94 or 96? It was better. It was better by enough points. I was like, whoa, that's way better. And I think this compares to like a 90 and a 74. I'll go look at them again, but I know we were at least meeting expectations from a class that did very well. Like you guys, I'm comparing you to a class that did extremely well, but I think many of you noticed that last night's like everyone's saying seven was tough. Yeah. And if you got above an 80 on chapter seven and, and please realize sometimes I send out emails reminding people. And if you watch the video, I got a few wrong. And then please remember if you are off by a few decimals or if you see me work a problem, I might say something like, if you get this part wrong, you can email me and I'll correct it. 
Has anyone emailed me and I've corrected something for you? Now, I don't correct everything. I won't, I can't correct everything. I can't be like, ah, I'll just give it to you. But, um, yep, we got some yeps in the chat. Please talk to me about these things. Please work them. Um, thank you guys so much. I appreciate that. Um, so many times with the decimals, it shows, yeah, I don't, if you, if you put in, if the answer is 2.124 and you put in 2. Point, even if you put in 2.1, I know you know it. I know you didn't guess 2.1. Now there's going to be some stuff later on, take a huge note on this, with the T intervals and the T tests, that's usually where people miss the decimals and I don't give points back because there's an issue where someone's probably using the Z instead of the T. So when we get to that chapter, you might be off by like, you know, you might put in something like 2.2 and you'll be like, Brian, I was really close. I was just off by a, by a tenth. And I'll be like, um, I don't think you used, it would actually go reverse. Don't worry about that. I'm not gonna explain why the T and the Z would be reversed, but um, because <laughs> that's a new topic, we're not covering that right now. Um, but I'll I'll tell you, I'll be like, uh, you might have used the Z instead of the T, and that'll cause a difference in the interval. The T is just a more exact way of calculating it, and the T will always be wider than the Z. So um, yes, seven is on the test, and so you won't need to use the regression solver on the test. It's more like theoretical and interpretation, so you won't need to use the regression solver on the test. And I was going to try the Streamlab things, then we'll talk about the test more. Before I forget, we're going to try a Streamlabs thing right here. So the test is more theoretical. Um, the hardest stuff. I would say overall, the test is easier than Chapter 7 quiz. It's more material. But the, the like ability for us to like do a very hard problem is a little limited by saying okay, now we're going to have you do these numeric entries or like we can't have you do long responses. It's a little more like if you know it, like if you know how to interpret a thing, you'll be able to figure out what the right answer is. And so far the grades, there's not a ton of grades. They're all really good. Like you guys are, you guys are, I, everyone's doing really great. And I would think, and I'm, I'm probably, I'm saying, I think it's due to you guys doing the quizzes, coming to class, doing the quizzes, doing the note taking. And there's a note taking due tonight. I know I'm hitting you with a lot of stuff. But if you have written down the four things, here's the four things you need on your note taking quiz. You ready? Take a note right here. Don't, don't be too scared. Remember, as long as you're doing the quizzes, as long as you're doing all the work, it's very hard to make less than a B in the class. So just, Whitley, Whitley just says to yourself, no matter how much I mess up the quiz, if I'm doing everything Brian asked me to, I should get a B. I can't promise it, but you'd be like, okay, the worst that's going to happen to me in many term if I'm doing all the work is I'll make a B. That's the absolute worst. And if you can, if you can put, go through a B and you do all the work, then you got it. That means doing all the quizzes, doing all the note-taking quizzes, just doing all the work. And then whatever happens on the tests happen. And they just be like, okay, I'm good. Just make sure everyone knows, do all the work. <laughs> he has got it. It's key to the class. Okay, here we go. The note-taking quiz tonight, you'll see it posted. Remember it is due. Um, you do know your grader after you take it. Oh, I'm glad right there. I'm glad to make you guys feel better. It's, um... You have to do the interpretation of the, I'm going to do them in notation. You have to do the interpretation of the what? Can anyone tell me the interpretations I'm asking for right here? Well, this one's obvious. And the four is four conditions. My handwriting is so bad. Here's the note taking quiz right here. Uh, no, you're fine. <laughs> Ask the questions. There we go. And make sure don't tell anyone what's on the test. Like, no, Thomas, I'm glad you say that, Thomas. Thomas gets some 20 points on Frenzy Fridays right here. So um, I'm really glad you say that, but just don't matter. It's like a test and you will see what you did this weekend. I will probably send out reminders tonight to like make sure to take it. I'd probably be taking the test like at 3 p.m. today. If I was in the class, I'd be taking it like 3 p.m. Yeah. So uh, what are the four things you need? What, is, what does this mean right here? What is the notation on this? You need interpretations of these. And what do you need? What is that? What is this? Well, that's R squared. That says R squared right there. That's what that is. It's R squared. It's percent of variation Y explained by the variation in X. You might have to slow this video because I'm going to say all these. I'm going to give you all the answers. What is B0? So you got it. B0 is the intercept. Nice job right there. Sarah and Needy get 20 points on Frenzy Fridays. Frenzy Friday. We're just throwing out points randomly. It's 20 points. You can get up to... 100 points on frenzy friday so you have to keep track of your points just write down those 20 when i give you those points on frenzy friday so we see people saying this is the intercept 
Remember, it's when x is equal to zero, we expect y to equal b zero. How do you know it? Well, look at the zero right there. When x is equal to zero, we expect y to equal b zero. How about this one right here? It's one. It's for each one unit increase in x, we expect y to increase by b one or decrease if it's negative. We ex <laughs> for each one unit increase in x, we expect y to increase or decrease by b one. Well, that makes it the slope. Great job in the chat, right? Those pick some people out. Maya, Keaton, Kate, Andy, Christina, you got all get some. And Olivia right there. And Nicole, Frenzy Friday, 20 points right there to you. So we've got here R squared. R squared is the percent of variation in Y is explained by the variation in X. Or you could say accounted for. It might say that on the test. Um, nice job. Buttons right there. 20 points. Great job. So in Sarah great job i like it when i see that right there you guys are following along you know what's happening make sure to turn this in for your note-taking quiz remember i do drop two note-taking quizzes you want to get the note-taking quizzes done like get them done but if you've missed you could have missed all the note-taking quizzes up till now and still be fine but don't miss them like let's say tonight you're like you're taking the test and you're like wait a minute we have a this we have an assignment we have this blah, 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 blah. so many things I know today's a big day, but guess what? I'm pretty sure I moved everything, so there's not an assignment due tomorrow night. So you guys get Saturday off. No assignments on Saturday. I think Sunday's your randomness assignment, which we'll cover today in class. But I'm pretty sure there are no assignments on... Yep. Now, I'm going to do something. I need a helper here. Who's going to be my helper? Let me look. I need a helper. And the only the helper should do this. <laughs> Please do not... Break the rules of only the helper helping me because we're going to try something because I need to look at something. I need to test something live. So do not anybody outside of the helper. Okay. First person who said me was Hannah. Okay. Um, yeah, this is the Streamlab things. Great question right there, Jared. So, um, so this is, and thank you very much. Nicole puts QQ straight enough. No outliers. Plot doesn't thicken. So there we go. And so we said, Hannah's the helper. Okay, Hannah. So I'm going to try something right here, Hannah. You ready? I'm going to try to remove some points from Hannah. Let's see. So do not anyone else type this. And then Hannah's going to help me out right here by trying this also. But no, I'll give points back. I'll give points back. <laughs> so, um, okay. No one else type these things that I'm typing or else don't do it. But Hannah and I, we're going to see if it says what it says and I might so I don't see Streamlabs registering that yet because Streamlabs might say that I've done this because if this works I can actually add points live to people but I think it might be like a uh, twitch thing I might think it might only work on twitch and I don't see it registering okay so let me turn that one off too because I've tried these on YouTube and they just don't work and I tried another command yesterday and it showed the top people so let me turn that one off just in case. Hannah, can you check your points for me real quick? I'll make sure you get that one point back. Unless it wants... We'll try one more way of this. Unless it wants this. Unless it wants it written like that. Sorry. <laughs> I just keep trying to remove a point. <laughs> This is too, I put an alias for it. Yeah, keep checking. Um, <laughs> I have it turned off for everyone now, including moderators, but it doesn't seem to be working. It seems to be a Twitch. Yeah, it seems to be a Twitch thing. Okay, so I can't do it. Um, I'm just glad it works, like points work. Um, so Hannah, Hannah, you get 40 points on Frenzy Friday. Thank you for helping out. Don't worry. If I did remove points, I only removed three points from you. So... Um, I just wanted it to work live. I wanted it to be able to adjust points like that. And I could just highlight someone's name. I wish I could just click on your name and go to add points, but no. So it would, it would be so easy because I could just like clicking points here and there and be like, hey, you got points, you got points, click, click, click. And just, especially if I had a TA, because we've talked about having TAs watch this and they could do it. So I do it afterwards. I go back in and do it. Yeah, it'd be cool. <laughs> 40 Fridays. <laughs> Frenzy Fridays. Well, then we're doing, what do you say, up to 100 points today? Because it's going to be some crazy points. I just, it, from two to four, I answered emails. And then once we're done there, I answered emails again. Um, I try to reply to you guys as much as I can. I really appreciate it. I'll tell you guys one last quick story. Last story with Brian, then we get, we'll get serious here. Um, there was a day during the semester. <laughs> Maybe this was the person who was mad at me. 
um, someone emailed me and they said, they said, I expected when I took an online class that you would reply quickly to my, to my, uh, emails. And what they did was, and this is advice. This is advice. This is a life advice term right here, at least for Brian. This is how to help Brian life advice. We all need how to help Brian life advice. We need the life advice from Brian thing right here. So when I reply to emails, I always do it from the very bottom of the list to the top. So one of the, well, one, if I don't email you back, probably within 24 to 48 hours, please email me again. It might've gotten lost. I have accidentally clicked on an email. Um, during this semester, I get between, sometimes I get up to 200 a day. During mini term and stuff, it's about 50 a day right now. But during the semester, I can reach 200. It's like right now it's about 30 to, it's, it's normally distributed with a mean of about 40 and a standard deviation of 10. It's a little bit right skew though, because it can get very high, right to the high, left to the low. During the semester, it's probably like mean of 120 or so and a standard deviation of 20, still right skew though, like a little normal, but a little right skew. So um, what you always want to do, well, thank you so much, Buttons. That's why I try to. And what the person did was, and I don't I understand, they were frustrated. Um, if you email me, you'll be at the the bottom of the list, which is good. But here's what happens when you reply to that email. Do you know what happens when you reply to your email because I haven't emailed you yet? Two people have done this. I'll another person now. You'll go to the very top of the list, which is not where you want to be. You want to be down here in the emails I haven't replied to. So I, I have had another person, this was like a year or two ago, and I was answering emails and it was like test day and they were stuck on something. So they emailed me at like 8 a.m. and I was at school, so I was doing work. Like I was, you know, like I couldn't answer emails because I was helping students and I was teaching. And then I started answering emails at like two, but then they replied to their email. So they went to the top of the list and then I had to go do some more stuff. And then I came back like at eight and was answering emails and they had emailed, they had replied again. They, went to the, they kept moving themselves higher and they kept like, so I would have, I would have gotten to it. Like I, and, and it, there are instances where I don't reply within a day, but, um, um, if it's on the same line of thought, keep it to that. If it's on the same line of thought, keep it like you can reply to your extra credit email. That's that's fine. It's extra credit. So if you go to the extra credit email you sent me and just reply to that with your new points, that works perfectly. If your email is titled like, uh, what are the conditions for regression? You're like, hey, Brian, can you I don't understand the note taking quiz. What are the conditions for regression? Then don't reply to that for like an email later on, like, like within the email be like when is test three like because then i'll see the email title like what are the conditions for regression i'll click on it and it'll say like hey brian when is test three and it'll be like a reply to the email chain so i like to keep the email threads as like a does that <clears throat> does that make sense um <laughs> i don't know what's going on um does that make sense right there um <laughs> does my answer no no she's she's great she's like she yeah she's awesome and I really appreciate you guys. Um, I really appreciate you guys using the email titles. I think everyone knows it. Just to repeat, you guys have been really great on it. Um, it's stat tool one. Space pen is here for us. Mini. Dash your initials. So mine will be Brian Joseph Stevens. It's a full name. <laughs> and then title. And so that's it right there. I think we know that. Uh, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> one of these days, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. She'd be so embarrassed to come on stream. But no, she's awesome. I'll tell you guys say hi. I'll tell you guys say hi. She's a she's a veterinarian. She's she's taking care of all the animals. That's what we got. Take care of the lemurs right here. I should have grabbed more animals today. I've got some more animals. Not real animals though. So we will have real animals though. She's she's the smart one. So I really mean that. I say that and I really mean that. She's like way smarter than I am. So I mean I yeah, I know stats. I know stats. She would be like, you know stats. And I'll be like, Yeah, I do know stats. But uh, we have a bunny, a bunny, a bunny named named Morty. Bet you can't guess what he's named after. <laughs> so um, we have a bunny, bun, bun, bun. So what type? I, I can't remember. He's white. He's white. He's a white bunny. I guess they're watching. Yeah, vet school's hard to get into the med, med school. Is, is really tough and you have to know every animal and it's pretty insane like the amount of stuff you have to know ah uh, no they flop back they flop back they're like the usual bunny length over his head so um he's pretty sweet bunnies are 
cantankerous. I think that might be the right word. Like they, they're interesting, but he is sweet. He's sweet when he's sweet. He's super sweet. Like he'll flop. He'd be like, and then you'd be like, ah, <laughs> and he, he, he loves his carrots, which he can't have a ton of, but he's like, and then broccoli, carrots, celery. He's all about that. Um, <laughs> let's see. Oh, that's a few more things. He says, yeah, yeah. Vet school is really hard. Claire. It's like, it's, there's so many animals. You have to treat, and then every animal reacts differently to everything. It's like you have to know, and you have to do up a plan. And when you're switching between like a ferret to a cat to a dog to a horse to a cow, so there's large animal, small animal, exotic, you know, and then you know, you have to get so many hours of practice on each thing to be like uh, board certified in like a certain area. Oh, he's he's in he's far away right now, and animals can't talk. So when you're taking a history, um, yeah, jokes. <laughs> My cousin just graduated from UT Vet School in 2018. Oh, that's so cool. That's awesome. Congratulations to your cousin. It's really tough. Yeah, so that he probably knows uh, Dr. Um, Reed. Is that Dr. Reed? Dr. Reed is awesome. Dr. Reed's my hero. He makes really great videos. He doesn't even know it, but he's my hero. I've seen, he's done so many cool videos and stuff. Dr. Reed is awesome. There's so many great people at the vet school. Like UT Vet School is top tier. We're top vet school in the nation, in my opinion. So, and everyone's opinion, which is what matters. I think we got it. I think we have our randomness out of the way. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> interesting. Um, oh, that's so cool. Wow. Wait, they graduated in 2018? And they're a dean at a, oh, at a small vet school. Well, that's really impressive. Congratulations. That's That's amazing. That is, wow. Cool, cool, cool. You guys are telling me things, very important stuff. Any last questions about the test as we warm up our minds and we get ready here and we have our little bit of fun? Any questions about the test? Yes, Dr. Reed is awesome. Is it Harry? I can't think of his first name. Yeah, Dr. Reed's amazing. <laughs> Brian for team, you guys are awesome. Um, one through eight, one through eight button. <laughs> one through eight. Chapters one through eight. Any other last? You guys are so nice. Chapters one through eight. One through eight. I guess ready for some randomness. We'll do some more. Is there a key for the review exam? I think so. If you can't find it, Taylor, email me. <laughs> you guys are so nice. Are we doing review first or doing the? Should we? You guys vote. 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 There we go. It's vote time. We got. We got vote. We have a question that we're gonna start. Here we go. Da 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 da. da. Wait member okay so i'll make this very clear so people aren't confused um so we have a uh, review which is going to be r or we have uh randomness or chapter new chapter or review which we do do we for, do first don't don't type yet so it's r for review or c for chapter r for review or c for chapter and the poll should be showing up R for review or C for chapter. This one's a shorter one. It's, I can do it in an hour. We'll leave the poll open for a moment longer. And thank you guys for, I, I always appreciate you guys asking the questions. You know, tell me what you think. Tell me where you're at. I know we spend the first 20 minutes just kind of relaxing, making sure we know what's going on. But I always think it's important to know what's going on in the class. Just relax for a moment and then ask all the questions. It's kind of our question. If you ever notice the first 20 minutes of class, it's making sure we know what's going on, me giving you guys the pep talk. And so we do spend the first 20 minutes getting our brains oriented, knowing what's going on with the world today. So what did we learn? The test is going on right now. People are doing pretty well on it. We've got the note taking quiz going on right now and some other fun stuff. Okay, you guys ready? And then I do, if you do watch these videos later, I do section them off. You guys know that. So you can easily tell where things start and begin. So maybe you're making your coffee right now. During this part, if I was in this class right now, I'd be like getting my coffee, getting my oatmeal, whatever I'm going to have, and I'm just going to be relaxing. It's chill time right now. Now we're going to get serious. I need a minute to wake up so it's perfect. That's what I like too because I'm still waking up. I'm getting my brain started up here. So let's close the poll. You guys did it. It is now official. Guess what we're going to be doing? It is time to change screens and head over to the main screen right here. Am I still randomness going? Nope. Randomness, go away. It's not randomness day. We've got a rainbow right here because it's going to be. It's 
But let's do this. Let's get going right here with a little bit of review. Okay, so what chapters are on this test? The chapters on this test are, you should at least have some sort of idea on them, is chapter one kind of like stats? I'd call this the stats chapter. Like, what is stats? So stats is, great job in the chat right there. Erica, Christina, Alyssa, and Emily, 20 points right there on Frenzy Fridays. So um, good job. First people to start telling me what's on the test. I like that. Chapter two is kind of like, They changed these chapters on us recently, so I'm very sorry if I don't put exactly what these chapters are. Did we do... It was the huge chapter now. Okay, good. I know it is. Chapter 2 is univariate data, I would say. It's both categorical and quantitative now. They changed what it is. It used to... They changed it. Types of univariate. Sam, 20 points on Frenzy Fridays. Helping me. Ugh. The only thing about my new setup now is like I have to reach in a weird direction to write sometimes. Um, this one right here is going to be by. And let's put a note on this and let's start. We'll, we'll talk about any of these chapters you want in depth. So this right here is categorical quantitative. And this right here is, um, do we cover both there? I think, when did we do mosaics? So types of, types of bivariate categorical displays. Yep. And categorical, categorical, quantitative. Oh, no, no, because we didn't do that here. And so really, I think this one was bivariate data, just categorical, categorical. Then this one right here is also bivariate. And it's like um, displaying multiple space, but it's still bivariate. So let's do, um, I'm going to call it bivariate data. We're going to go in depth on any of these topics. I'll explain all the notation on it. But if these things are ringing bells, oh, I know. Yep, between categorical variables. Is that what, relationships between categorical variables. Is that where, is that where mosaic plots are at now? Formula sheet, just really quickly, you can have E equals actual minus predicted and this right here. Take, pause the video. Um, that's B1X. Pause the video if you need it. Those are the formulas. Actual minus predicted and, and the predicted from the equation is B0 plus B1X. Pause the video. Pause the video if you need it. You can rewind, pause the video. Oh, wait, relationships between categorical variables? Yes. Is that where... Gosh, my brain is going out. Categorical variables. So that is where, yeah, they did move it. So that's CC. And this is, what was chapter three again? That's where chapter three, <laughs> you guys are so awesome. <laughs> chapter three is where the multiple displays are. Chapter three is where they put the uh, quantitative y with the, that's, it's like multiple displays or something. So chapter five is normal model, just normal model. The normal model is just quantitative data. So relationships between, wait, someone said chapter four was that. See, wait, the chapter three and chapter four, are they both labeled that? That might be an error on our part. Um, we'll put understanding comparing just, oh, no, it's, <laughs> that's all right. Oh, wait, can I do this? That'd be so good if I could do this. No, go away. Stop. Okay, I can't do it. Yeah, so it is. I'm very sorry. And then. Understanding, comparing, so comparing. <laughs> comparing distributions. So this is that, and then this is this. And then number six. Is correlation.
what am I going to put for all six and seven and eight? Six, seven, and eight. Very sorry for my horrible handwriting. Six, seven, eight. I should have just done it in Word. I'd been way quicker and better if I just done it in Word. What um? So if you have, if you want to know what any of these means, the chat's saying it too. What are what kind of data does six, seven, and eight use? What kind of data does six, seven, and eight use? And then you guys, I'll start writing things actually on the Word so you can read it a lot better than my handwriting. Because even I'm looking at them like Brian, what does that say? It says it says stats because it's just like what do we use stats for? Then it says univariate data, categorical data, comparing distributions, normal, correlation, regression. What am I going to put for 678? Does anyone know? I don't see the chat saying anything. Frenzy Friday, who's going to tell me what 678 means? I want to see some Frenzy Friday points right here. 678, you got it. Buttons, you got it. Who else is going to say it? Not just Q. I want to see the full thing. Buttons, Morgan, Nicole. Buy, it is by very Kyle. Take that. Kelly, Sam, Maya, Cole, William, Skylar, Ethan, Kyle, Elizabeth, Hannah, Thomas, Gracie, Hunter, Sarah, Kate, Taylor, Alyssa, Thomas, Matthew. So there, Sophia, make sure QQ, make sure QQ, Andy, Sam, Christina, Claire, Bridget. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm good. Woo. Okay. Yeah. All that is QQ. So we've got a little bit of notes. We've got some notes right here helping us out with these chapters about what do you guys want to talk about? First person to tell me which chapter to talk about. Let's start talking about it. Now, this is the types of data that's used. And oh, wait, we forgot something. I was thinking it when I said it. Pivot. Pivot charts are on these. Stats gives data context. So stats is used to give data context and understand variation within data. Those two key phrases right there are pretty important for the test that stats or all data needs context. All data needs context. And then we see some votes for two and for six. Okay, cool. I'll do some two and six here in a moment. Um, and four. So all data needs context. That's so very important. It's something you'll see as we interpret stuff. I was talking a lot about this interpretation needs to make sense. We need to understand what we're saying right here. So all data needs context. And then um, on top of that, stats is about understanding and measuring variation within data. We have the different types of variables. We have pretty much the, the main two types you care about. Um, can we use the captions while you're live? I, I hope that'd be cool. Maybe you can, maybe, I don't know, give it a shot. Tell me if you can. I haven't tried that. I have to learn things too. Um, we have categorical. I was hoping you'd autocorrect. Not today, though. Categorical, which has subtypes, which not that big of a deal. Ordinal, and then nominal. Then we have quantitative, which has subtypes, discrete. And I think I removed these from the test because even I don't know how to spell them. I don't know how to spell it. Continuous. Maybe that's right. So um, I don't really care about the subtypes that much. I care more that you know what very quickly what a, what a categorical and a quantitative is. So I'm sorry. I wish it was that you could do that. That'd be so cool. Be awesome. Uh, I wish YouTube had that option. And yeah, we should. Um, and especially for us to be, what is it? There's a term. We should do that. And maybe we could with, because UT has those options. And I know YouTube lets you do it. So people can do that for multiple languages. But my videos are really long. So if someone, I mean, UT pays people to do that. But if someone ever wanted to do that, I'd be in their debt. Uh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, we should do, we should do, that'd be so cool. Yeah, I know. That'd be so cool. Like, special type of categorical. Yeah, that'd be, Sarah, I'd love that. I should talk to them about it because what is it called? There's a term and I can't think of the term. It's like, it's in my head. 1,000 points per video. Oh, and I do have an announcement. <clears throat> if you put, so every week I'll allow you to add a comment. Good, good, Claire, excellent work. Identifiers are things that are structurally unique that do not repeat, but I will allow people to add a comment you can add a comment to any video you want on the channel that you check out, whether it be a review video or anything. And I will give you, 
how many points? I think let's say 20 points and you can do it five times a week because this is a shorter class. So, but whatever you do, don't just start adding like comments like, hi, I want you to actually a video you watch. I want you to add a comment to that video. Like, um, you could put a timestamp. You could just, you can upload it too. But once again, we're always just trying to make the, the channel more active. So if you put a comment on a video, mention something you learned, um, you can do it on an account that doesn't have your name on it. If you don't want to have your name on a video where it says like, you know, so-and-so and put a comment here on this video. Um, so you can use another account, another name. I don't mind. No, don't do, you're like, hmm, can I use 10 accounts and make five comments on, no, don't do that. So I want you to actually like interact with the videos. I want you to put a comment like, uh, you know, like, QQ straight enough. No, like if you watch a regression video, you could put QQ straight enough. No outliers plot to every, no, every regression video is going to have that. So, um, but does that make sense? So people are asking how they can they get extra credit if they don't come to class live. So if you watch a video, past videos, yep. That's my goal is you can do it on a current video on a past video. If you're watching a review video for the test or something like that. So those ideas, and thank you for the people who emailed me and helped me come up with these ideas. I'm always trying to like, you, when you guys ask for stuff, when you're saying this would help me out, I try to come up with new ways for us to get credit like that. And don't forget to like, yeah, that really helps out. So I don't know, like, like the reason I want this YouTube thing to grow is once again, if we start making, if we can make $10 a day on YouTube, that's like almost $4,000 a year. And then what I want to do is I want to have a stat to one scholarship and we could give like a thousand dollars a semester to like a stat to one student. Imagine if we made $3,000 a semester. We could give out three one thousand dollar scholarships to stat to one students and we could you know do like a thing like you got an a into stat to one and you're in like you just would fill out a thing it would a very short thing so that would be really cool and pizza parties pizza parties all these different things yeah so the more you help out the channel the more it grows <clears throat> that's our idea right there and <laughs> give me an email assistant i see i just like doing it myself because then i know it's done because if I do it myself, then you know you're talking to Brian and you know it's done. I like that right there. So here's the types of variables. They give data context. It's very important to know what's going on, that we have these different types. What's a discrete? What's a continuous? I threw this at you guys yesterday. Um, I don't, I think I removed the questions. I was just like, discrete is like two, three, four. It's just whole numbers. This will need to be known later. Discrete is whole numbers. That's what discrete means. What's continuous mean? It's numbers that have decimals next to them. So continuous, technically that can be continuous. Um, continuous is like on a number line. So if you ask somebody how many cats they have, would their answer be discrete or continuous? If you ask someone how many cats they have, you got it, Claire, and you got it, Emily. Would cats be discrete or continuous? How many cats do you own? Discrete. Because if someone had said they own 2.2 cats, you'd be like, what? See, and I would, I used to, harass Papa John's with this harass. I'd call up Papa John's and I'd be like, I want to order 2.8 pizzas. And they'd be like, 2.8 pizzas? And I'd be like, yes, 2.8 pizzas. And they're like, two or eight? I'd be like, no, 2.8. And they would, there'd be this pause and I'd do it during class. But now with the craziness, I'm not going to harass people who have to work. <laughs> but it was a lot funnier when someone was just working a job normally. Um, but they can't handle beast mode. <laughs> I like that Kyle, Kyle 20 was right there. Um, so we understand that there are things in this world that are discrete and there are things that are continuous. So you could say, I ate 2.8 pizzas. We'd be like, whoa, you ate 2.8 pizzas. You'd be like, well, they were, they were Totino's pizzas. Like the, no, they were, uh, was it Totino's? What's the ones? Man, I love those pizzas. Those microwavable pizzas. Oh, so good. Wait, you're not supposed to microwave them. I found that out. <laughs> you're supposed to put them in the oven or toaster oven. So good. Um, <laughs> stats bring, yes, that's a really good idea. 20 points on her. Um, and so if we do a pizza party, it should be hard knocks pizza, hard knocks pizza, best pizza. That's a opinion right there. We've got ordinal and nominal right here. Ordinal means that it has order to it, like steak preference. Nominal would be something that has no order to it. So a nominal categorical variable would be, um, hard knocks is amazing. Hard knocks is the best 20 points right there, Olivia and Bridget. So um, nominal would be something like uh, day of the week has order to it. You guys got to help me out. Cruise Farm Pizza. I have to try that in Erica. I know they make really good, really good ice cream. I like Blaze. I like Blaze. I get Blaze is great. Blaze is great. But Hard Knocks. Hard Knocks, way to go. Personal opinion. 
uh state you're born in buttons helped me out for 20 points right there we did say that you did remember that was from class that's awesome there is no order to state you're born in color's pretty nominal too color's pretty nominal also great job neeland and hunter 20 points so or favorite restaurant my brain's turning on right here we got this favorite restaurant color of shirt you're wearing uh how no is your hair long no because it's like short medium long hair that's ordinal so you see i uh, i lost it the length of your hair in terms of short medium and long is is ordinal because you can put that in an order so that's an ordinal categorical variable class level is a bit ordinal now i might did i say it was nominal last time there are nominal parts to it like a uh, non-traditional student if you classify yourself non-traditional or um but graduate still has an order to it because graduate comes after freshman sophomore junior senior so um class level would be nominal i did i did i like i was like oh, it could be this could be this um why didn't i say it's ordinal favorite car that's that is going to be nominal so i think we got it i think we know what this is this is a pretty easy chapter it's kind of like definitions like if you use there we go we've got gender would be nominal race would be nominal um so an age group if you do age group that would be ordinal usually age is quantitative though and age is usually given as a oh wait look at this here watch as i do this right here age is actually a continuous variable as in your age is continually updating like i am 38.4 oh no like that means i'm about halfway to my uh 39th birthday but i am 38.4 but usually we just give age as a discrete number like 38 like if i told you someone said how old are you brian i'm like i'm 38.42 and you'd be like you're 38 <laughs> what's wrong with you i'm a stats teacher that's what's wrong with me but a lot of times we talk about age groups, like someone is 30 to 40. Oh, thank you. Um, we talk about age groups right here. Someone is 30 to 40, like age group. And can it really be nominal? No, if you do age as a categorical, so um, it's it would be um, that right there. Is <laughs> everyone 30 in the chat? So um, some days I feel it. Oh, that sounds sad. Sounds like I'm old. <laughs> oh, this is over right there um 38 years young you got it the day i turned 40 and i'm like i'm 40. no my brother's 40. when he turned 30 i was like whoa he's 30. and then now he's 40. you thought i was 28. well i appreciate that thank you so much it's shave and then i'll look even younger again i'll try appreciate it that's it's i have one time people have been like you know i talked about when i played pokemon go people are like oh what are you studying and i'm like I don't mind. I don't mind to say that. I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> I should be doing my PhD. I should finish my PhD. I should finish it. I think people said chapter four, comparing distributions. These are all quick kind of reviews of them. I do have longer reviews and the Kahoot yesterday. We had some people jumping into the Kahoot saying it was a huge help. Still play it daily. That is awesome. What is the events? Uh, what is it? C dot. What's his name? He's going to be shiny. He's going to be a shiny coming up here for, uh, for uh, community day, play indoors community day. You know what I got last night? I got a shiny, um, I got a shiny totodile, and like I'm of course playing from my apartment, but I got, I, I was like, okay, I have a shiny totodile because it was a community day. Give me a shiny something else. I clicked on it. And I was like, what's going on? It should grow back the beard. It was all right. I got used to it, and then I was like, uh oh, if I don't shave this, I'm gonna become the beard guy. Um, oh, thank you. Counter is is ageless. He's pretty awesome. Your breath taken right there, Ethan. So that's the quote. People don't know that. Um, I know. Oh, I hate when you get repeat Chinese or everything changes to a ditto. <laughs> yeah, ditto was really prevalent for a while. And then you just need that one ditto for that one research thing. And then you're like, okay, I got my ditto. So um, ditto's in gyms back when gyms had 10 people in it. That was awesome. You know what? You know what's interesting? I can tell you. <clears throat> Here, let's talk about Pokemon Go for a moment. This is actually the distribution of levels of a Pokemon in the wild. Uh, if there is no... Tell me about the distribution of Pokemon in the wild. This is the distribution of levels of Pokemon in a wild. So Pokemon levels in the wild follow this following distribution. So what do you know about this? The level of a Pokemon you get in the wild is what? The level of a Pokemon you get in the wild is what? Uniform. It's uniformly distributed. As in, when you get a Pokemon, it pretty much just randomly generates a number between random, between 0 and 30. And so I can talk a lot about 
randomness with Pokemon because it's each Pokemon is kind of randomly generated from a distribution of uniform levels. So when we say uniform, it's as equally likely that you'll get a level one Pokemon as you will a level 30 Pokemon. So, um, oh no, don't worry, it's recorded. Great, you guys are awesome. Neilan and Jared, 20 points right there, helping out, and Gracie, 20 points for asking a question because it looks like I missed it, but uh, Neilan's helping out right there. Thank you very much, Neilan. Appreciate that a lot. And what's interesting though is this, is that the, um, sorry, the bin widths should be equal. The percent awesome of a Pokemon. I'm sure Claire knows about 100% Pokemons, which have uh, stats of 15, 15, 15. So those are um, those are perfect Pokemon that have 100% rating. Um, <clears throat> so those Pokemon right here, and it's a little, it's actually a little tighter than that. The pro probability of a perfect Pokemon is 15 to the third power. No, we no, no, it's 16 to the third power because Pokemon can have zero because you can get a zero, zero, zero Pokemon. So it's 16 to the third power, which is, you can say, what's the probability of getting, I think it's, what is it? So the probability of getting a perfect Pokemon in the wild is one in 4,096. So every, just randomly, now it's not saying if you do 4,096 Pokemon, you will get a perfect Pokemon. <clears throat> it's just saying every time you click on a Pokemon, the probability of it being perfect is this. And so you see here that the distribution of uh, how good a Pokemon is, is normally distributed with a mean. Does anyone have any guess what the mean is? Does anyone have any have any guess what the mean is for this? The mean would be what? 50%? You got it. Yep. Yep. And what you could do is all of a sudden Digimon, Digimon comes out. Digimon, Digital Monsters. I don't know the rest of that song, but I know all the Pokemon. Pokemon, catch them all. It's you and me. I know it's our destiny. Pokemon, oh. You said it. You said it. You're my best friend in a world we must defend. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> so, oh, I didn't start out. I want to be the very best like no one ever was. To catch them is my real test. To train them is my cause. I will travel across the land, searching far and wide. Each Pokemon to understand the power that's inside. Okay, you should have done it. You didn't do it. You lose points. <laughs> I'm going to watch this video later. Okay, so Digimon came out with this while I was drawing this. Uh, you got it. You know what's going on. <laughs> Digimon came out with their own game. Digimon, go away. What you doing, Digimon? And you see, Digimon didn't tell you this. But what Digimon did, did is they... Um, <laughs> Digimon changed the, kind of the center of the distribution. So Digimon is using a... I want to delete the red line. Good. Digimon has a higher uh, percentage. And people are like, wow, my Digimon are so much better than my Pokemon. Can't fight them. They're different universes. Fight them. That sounds bad. Can't battle them. So um, uh, you look at the distributions, and this is kind of chapter four right here. It's a quick review of it to say when you are comparing two quantitative distributions, they should have the same vertical and horizontal scales. So you have to put them all. These are both 0 to 100 scales. You wouldn't want to take the Digimon distribution and start graphing it right here, even though the Pokemon kind of goes to there. It's not going to look the same. When you compare distributions, they should have the same horizontal axis. So what do we have right here for 20 points? These are something somethings. You have to give me both words. I mean, they're kind of, they're kind of like something on top of each other, and they're both what? So what kind of graphic is this? What kind of, ooh, I've tricked everyone. You are right, they are unimodal, they are symmetric. That's the shape center spread of them, which is also something we should know. Very close, Claire, I'm giving Claire 20 points right there, and I'm giving Needy 20 points. Uh, you have to take Claire and Needy's things and put them together, who else is gonna get 20? Close, who's gonna put together what Claire and Needy said? It's very close. You have to put together what they said. Boom, Sophia right there, you got it. 
and also Sophie uh, Sarah was right there with it. So um, we have stacked histograms. These are called stacked histograms. Now you could take these and make side by side bar charts, uh, side by side box plots. So we would see like the Pokemon. This would be the Pokemon right here. So these are the same sorts of graphics, but we're doing them. And then Digimon would be something right here. I only know the start of the Digimon song because I would like, it would be on and then I would like turn the channel. Digimon, digital mon. And then I'm like, click. <laughs> I don't know the rest of it. <laughs> and uh, like the only thing I know for Yu-Gi-Oh is like, yo, yo, yo. And then I'm like, I, I don't, I don't know. Pokemon was like the last major show I got into. It came out when I think I was 14 or 15. So I, I started watching Pokemon and then everything else was like, this is trying to be Pokemon, but with cards. This is trying to be Pokemon, but with digital monsters. So, um, and then when I was like 18, people were like, you like Pokemon? I'm like, I don't know. It came out like three years ago. So, <laughs> and then I, I bet I would like Yu-Gi-Oh. It was just, I don't know. I was like, you know, I was like, Pokemon's my thing. Pokemon's the best. So that's the only thing right there. And so you can see Digimon. Um, there's a few things we notice about Digimon right here. Uh, if you notice one that the box plots give you, you know what we're going to do? Digimon just randomly gives you a really bad Pokemon. A really bad Digimon. <laughs> there we go. So these these distributions relate to each other. If you can see, I added that part of this where all of a sudden you just get it. Because they don't want people to know their trick. They don't want people, they're like, oh, look, you got a really bad Digimon, but it's really rare. It's in a complete outlier. Um, so, oh, that's so good right there, first movie. So I added in this extreme outlier. So these two distributions right here, just so we can see how they relate. This is a box plot of the following graphic right here. These are side-by-side -side box plots showing the same sort of stuff. So you can see that both of these distributions have a quantitative Y and a categorical X. Does this, does this make sense what you're viewing right here? This is a understanding how to visualize stuff. Up here, the top distribution was just one quantitative variable. So we talked about the levels in Pokemon just being uh, uniformly distributed with, it has a mean of 15 or so. Um, that's awesome, Ethan. I, I, maybe I'll start deleting people. You guys put your friend codes. I do think, I don't know. Cause you just, you can battle people and stuff like that. Don't worry. You have to like, I've added student support with friend codes on Pokemon go. And then like, I don't know. Yeah. I think cause yeah, Ethan, another Ethan has Pokemon go. It's kind of Ethan's last name. So, but then also I've played way too much. Um, if I were to show you My legendaries, I have like three or 400 legendaries. It's kind of sad. I'm at like five or 600, it's bad. Now I don't have as many because I can't raid as much. So, and I don't buy the, I don't know how to. We've got a Discord, we've got a UTK Pokemon Go Discord, which is really successful. Like, but I haven't even looked at, it's probably, probably lost the Discord. Probably just no one's using it. Okay, we're having our fun. We understand what's going on right here. Does everyone see, and I sh we should play Sword and Shield. Chelsea plays the, the Game Boy ones a lot more than I do, even though and then Sword and Shield's on Switch, though. Sword and, Sword and Shield uh, was the last one, like Sun and Moon, and those were on Game Boy. So all this right here, does everyone understand the difference between side-by-side -side box plots and stacked histograms? Does everyone understand the difference between... It's just two ways to, to show uh, bi bivariate data that is showing us a quantitative Y. The Y here is um, we're looking at the percent a Pokemon is. So... Oh my gosh, wait. That's right, right, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the the y-axis, my brain broke for a second, is how many Pokemon are in each bin. And then we are measuring the percent of Pokemon's in. Now over here, this one is going to have 0 to 100% here. And this is going to have 100% here. And you can see that it is the y-axis. But the only, why do histograms, a singular histogram... Like a singular histogram is just quantitative. And then this on the side of it is the count of how many observations are in each bin. Like there's a lot of Pokemon that have a rating near 50. Like a that's a bin of going from like 45 to 55. I don't know the exact bin widths on those. We didn't talk about bin widths much here. But uh, the bin width is the distance the bins are apart. So you would have to actually look at it and see the numbers on it. Like maybe this says, just for example, it says 40 to 60. And just pretending I know my numbers are not correct. But if the bin right there said 40 to 60, the bin width would be 20. 
Now, the numbers are a little bit weird right there, but that's what a bin width is. It's just the distance the bins are apart. And so even though I have 40, 50, 60, I'm trying to tell you in this graphic that the bin width here is 20. Don't try to figure out the rest of them. It doesn't work out perfectly. Um, which would have the bigger range? Oh my gosh. Let's do it. You ready? Great question right there. Frenzy Friday points. That's an amazing, that's worth 40 points right there. Although these might not match up perfectly to the histograms anymore. Which of these has the bigger range? Pokemon right now or Digimon? Which of these has the bigger range? Pokemon or Digimon? I'm purposely doing a trick question from yesterday and I can't trick you anymore. You know that when you do range to include what? That's an amazing note right there. Thank you so much for asking that right there. A well-deserved 40 points, making me come up with a question to see if I can trick you. You know when you include, when you do range, you should include outliers because that's the minimum right here. This is just where the start of outliers would be. That's like the lowest point that is not an outlier. Amazing question in the chat, well worth those 40 points. When you do range, you must include the outliers. Uh, also, Digimon wins out over here too, just by the way it looks visually. Digimon would win here also. And it looks like, yeah, it actually, you know what? By shortening that, that whisker right there, it actually looks more like this. So amazing stuff right there. Um, so all this good stuff, really good review of this chapter. Um, some key points were mentioned like histograms when they're stacked should have the same horizontal and vertical scales to them. So you should use uh, uniform scaling and, uh, same that's uniform scale. This is called uniform scale down here on the bottom. And this would just be the same, uh, sure. And delete. Ah, <laughs> there we go. This would be the same horizontal scale right here. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> okay. And then what other chapter do you want to hear more about? We'll do another maybe 15 minutes of review or 20 minutes of review. That was a really good review of that chapter. And and I think the Cahoots a really great review yesterday. And people, Adam came in the review yesterday and he said Cahoots the way to go. So Cahoots really good. Chapter five. Oh, let's do chapter five. That's a good one. That, when I said, I was like, oh, that's a big one. Chapter five. Okay. So immediately from chapter five, what should we know? We should know Z scores. A z-score, we should know the formula for it. A z-score is just a standardized metric of distance. Something is away from the mean. So we see how far it is away from the mean. Does that make sense? Uh, the coot was done at 4 p.m. yesterday, and it's on the YouTube channel. You'll see it as one of the most recent videos. You can do... I'm writing this two ways, but it doesn't matter which way you write it. One's with the population notation. Oh, what am I doing? I don't even know the chapter. So one, this one right here is population notation. If you do it as a population, this one here is sample notation. It doesn't matter which one you use. It both means the same thing. Just depends on how you're classifying what the mean and standard deviation are. So it's good kind of we do a little review of notation to know that mu is the mean, sigma is the standard deviation, and these are population parameters. That's a review right there. And y bar is the sample mean and s is the sample standard deviation. And y is always the what. Y is always the what. What does Y stand for? Y is the, starts with an O, who's got the Frenzy Friday 20 points. You should know Y is the blank. Y is the what? The observed value, exactly. Nice job, Sarah. 20 points on the Frenzy Friday. So is Jared and Buttons and who else? Two more, Sam and Elizabeth. Great job on those Frenzy Friday points. Um, one thing we don't have right here that people often, don't worry, I often see this confusion. I'm mentioning it now just because we've talked about all these Ys. Who knows what Y hat is? We're going to get five peoples for some Frenzy Friday points. You should know what Y hat is in notation. So we've got here, let's see what people say. We've got the observed value of Y. We've got the mean value of Y, and Kyle knows it. And so does Sophia, and Neeland, and Cole, and Matthew, and Cl wait, and Sam, and Hunter, and Jack, and Taylor, and Michael, and Olivia, and Sarah, and Ethan, and Skylar. You guys got it. So awesome job right there. And Morgan, and Kate. Cool. Okay, we got it. <laughs> and SpongeBob, man, just because I like saying your name. SpongeBob. <laughs> this is the predicted right here. This usually comes from the regression equation. It's what we predict Y to be or expect. If someone said expected, I should give you points for expected too. It is like what we expect due to the regression equation. It literally comes from the equation of the line. So you will see also the notation of um, this is venturing into chapter seven a little bit. And I'll talk more about Z scores in a second. You got it right there, Jack. 20 points for asking that. I appreciate that. 
all of the let's change this all of the black dots right there are y's and all of the things on the red line so hopefully focusing in on this for a moment the predicteds come from the line that's why i have it color coded right there like that the black dots right there are all the actual values of y like if you were to trace one of these over right here and to say like okay where does this land right here that's its actual value but if you were to use its x to make a prediction and trace over that's its predicted value and a quick quick review right here this is what the distance between those two which is positive right now is it's what right here we literally just ventured into regression with notation talk the distance the rainbow pen right there is the what because i just did actual minus predicted this is its residual 20 points frenzy friday points to sarah right there that is the residual that is e in notation now we oftentimes uh write this as residual equals the actual minus the predicted and so i just kind of color coded it again so you can see what's going on with this but the residual is the distance between those and just seeing this multiple times hopefully it helps you got it residual wrap right there 20 points for elizabeth and lissa reminding us and sam Mary can get up to 100 points on these frenzy fridays pretty crazy day getting you guys hyped we need that energy on friday so we have here the residual and it's color coded we can see what's going on good stuff okay okay let's talk a little bit more about z scores z scores which are in chapter five are a standardized unit of measurement z scores are a standardized unit of measurement so z scores have no units to them you could say they're in units of standard deviations if you wanted but like when someone tells you like your friend was excited because their score nice job coleman 20 points for the notes in the chat if their score was a z score of two on the test what does what does that mean if your friend got a z score of two on a test what does that mean if your friend got a z score of two on a test what does that mean they are two standard oh claire so close so close skylar got it skylar amazing job now it is true you you wrote some you wrote something that is true so skylar the 20 points right there um you wrote something that is true yes yes you know it <laughs> claire 20 points for correcting it right there you are there are two standard deviations above the mean so you guys ready to do some quick math let's do it you ready the test is normally distributed with a mean of 70 and a standard deviation of 10 what did your friend score your friend scored what william wait wait it'd be 97.5th percentile william still giving you 20 points right there it'd be 97.5th percentile though very close good i know what you did that would be if someone made an 80 on the test if someone made an 80 they'd be at a z score of one and they'd be at the 84th percentile good good stuff good practice and you guys know it if you wrote 90 in the chat you get the 20 points everyone writing 90 so quickly write 90 while well, you can still get those 20 points for the 90. and great job everyone following along today this is an amazing friday class right now you guys are doing great uh oh wait a minute here's a very tough question now uh -oh. someone is sad because they scored in the 16th percentile the test was a really tough test though the test had an average of a 60 and it was very very skewed so it had a it was normally distributed because <laughs> we can't if i say it's skewed then we can't use the normal model because it normal has to apply to it um they scored they're sad they scored in the 16th percentile so 16th percentile is the lower so the 16th percentile Ooh, we see some answers right here i want someone to say i know it's this and you'll get your you'll get your 20 points you have to say i know they got a this or i know it's this you have to say i know you have to be like i know it's this I know, our great Neil. I know it's 40 Sam 20 points right there Sam knew it was 40 Sam you are right it is 40. now the reason for this is because the normal model when we draw it out right here we go down one standard deviation and where are we at I drew it a little wide I'm obsessed with drawing normals as accurately as possible okay that probably is good enough Okay, so this is the middle 68% due to the 68, 95, 99.7. We should have those numbers memorized. That means below here, wait a minute, is 16%. That makes this the 16th percentile. Doop. 
And so where is the 16th percentile? The 16th percentile is one standard deviation below the mean. So we put in our numbers in the context and we see we don't need that 80, but that's the that's the 84th percentile. We had someone do that. Oh, great job on that. And then this would be 40. And we see here that that is one standard deviation below the mean. There we go. So this was a review of how to find percentiles. Um, and these are the types of questions we would ask you instead of using the applet. So a lot of people say, well, how would you ask us questions on the test if we can't use the applet? It could be something like, what is the 16th percentile? What is the 97.5th percentile? And the 97.5th percentile would be down there. Now, I mean, it would be, and when I said down here, I meant it'd be that. That's the 97.5th because of this. One of the quickest way to realize this is the 97.5th is because at with 95 in the middle, if you only have 2.5% above here, then you would have 97.5% below there. It's kind of like the compliment we were talking about yesterday. And you know what I need? I need the Keanu Reeves, your breathtaking button. Like, no, your breathtaking. That needs to be in our needs to be in our sound box. I need I need quotes. I need you guys suggestions on quotes. I need to start bringing people's memes over. So like when like someone gets something right, <laughs> do it. <laughs> um <laughs> So <laughs> man, that was like an amazing E3 last year. Organic moments like that, you can't you can't replicate like Keanu just being Keanu just did that and it was awesome. So this is 97.5% below here. That's the 97.5th percentile. Who feels like this has helped just kind of like get their brain back to working on these sorts of problems? Do you guys feel a little bit about bit about little bit better about this material? Cool. And then can we do an interview? Oh, if he did that, if Count Razor wants to interview on Stats One, he's welcome to come on to Stats One and do an interview. Count Razor, you can show us all of his motorcycles. I think motorcycles are super cool, but I'm afraid of them. I'm lame. I'm my dad has a motorcycle, but I'm just like I, I knew someone in middle school. And their dad got really hurt on a motorcycle, and I think that kind of like put that in my brain. So um, they're they're cool, but they're dangerous. I mean, it, cars dangerous, but <laughs> I just feel like if I got a motorcycle, I'd be one of those people like going crazy on them. You'd be like. I don't know. I'm a very safe person. But then give me a motorcycle and I'm like, this is so much fun. So motorcycles are cool, but be careful. Okay. Any other last questions? Any other last questions? We always take a little bit of break after we finish some stuff. Any other last questions? We'll take a break at 11. Not yet, though. So 11 o'clock is usually when I aim for the breaks. And I did notice yesterday that we lost some people at, at 1130. I think we started, I can't remember what we did 1130, but I looked at the stats and we were like, it's so cool. I can see when people leave the video. So I have to look at what I did yesterday. So it was like, I think that's when we took our breaks. So we were going strong at like 50 or something, 51, 52. If I had to guess, how, I can't see how many people we're at. I bet right now we have 53 people watching. Do we? Watch you guys be like, we have 38 and I'll be, I'll cry. So not literally. 50. See, I know the stats. I know the stats on this. I watch it every day. I see how we're doing. Um, but it's Fridays. I know usually we have like, if you ever look at it, we usually have like 53. So we, we only have three people not watching on a Friday. And so usually it just bounces around. And then at like 12, um, it goes to this. And then when Brian starts having like, Brian talking about random stuff <laughs> like that. <laughs> so like usually when I stop, which is all right, I don't mind. But this is when I start doing the assignments. So it's like homework time and this is like random time and it goes down to like six viewers or so. It's probably like a few people who just like forgot to turn off the stream. <laughs> um, you confused how we got the 90 from the 70. Do you just plug in the mean standard in the equation? Yeah. Okay. Good question. Let's talk about that real briefly. Whenever you are given a normally distributed model. Um, yeah. So when we say a Z score is two, great job, Kyle, right there. 20 points, Ben for asking and Kyle for answering. Um, so what it is, you can take, there's a few ways to solve it. This is the way I always 
great job morgan 20 points great job amazing answers in the chat um you can say i'm gonna try to figure this out <laughs> see it's harder to do the math it's easier to know what the z-score is it's like the math is that an observation equals the mean plus uh the standard deviation times the z-score this is a reworking of the formula that a z-score equals to the observation minus the mean over the standard deviation it's it's a re it's a, another way to write this but when you hear something has a z-score it's literally telling you how many standard deviations something is above or below the mean so when i say that my z-score is zero that means i am where it means whatever i tell you my answer must be the what when i say my z-score is zero is yep you're right Alyssa. that's what that is you got it on the mean hunter you're right so when someone says they have a z-score of zero they are the mean um and you need to use these for normally distributed data once again it goes back to the idea of normally distributed data uses mean and standard deviation and skewed data uses median and iqr we talked about that a lot in the kahoot yesterday we did a really good review of that so that, that's in the kahoot if you want to review that just to make sure you know it and um so you'll notice right here that we just rework the formula into uh the the observation minus the mean over the standard deviation into now we're solving for the observation so when someone says here's my z-score and here's my mean and standard deviation so there's once again this is the uh this is the mean right here this is oof oof someone's gonna staff person's gonna see this i mixed notation um that was the mean but it was the sample mean oh my gosh i didn't want to erase it i want to highlight it the mean is right here if you ever see stuff like that call me out i'll give you big points this is the standard deviation and someone said their z-score was two does that make sense right there ben now that someone said their z-score was two to us we plug in the standard deviation we plug in the mean and then that'll solve for their observation so good job great question ben thank you so much for asking um and that's a really good we did a lot of review we did chapter one chapter some of chapter two we didn't do any mosaic plot stuff but um i think you guys do you guys any other things you guys want i'll go to 1020 and i think we can do randomness in the time it takes i can do randomness before 11. the four conditions i want to see in the chat 20 points people list the four conditions and i'll talk about them right here four conditions can we talk about correlation cool we'll do that next and let's do the four conditions here buttons wants to see those four conditions because that is the noting quiz due tonight let's put them in the chat for those 20 points we have here what is condition number one i need help with this right here we got qq straight enough no large plot doesn't dig in qq means that both x and y are quantitative variables it means whatever we give here needs to be quantitative variables such as like height predicting weight or usually i like to do weight predicting height just makes more sense what is your weight let's predict your height qq that's what that means right there and then we have straight enough straight enough means that whatever we see around the line basically follows it this is straight enough too many things i gotta erase and this would be not straight enough if it well the line wouldn't do that then this would be not straight enough so it should follow the straight line decently and it's straight enough it's not the perfectly straight condition so we could add in some stuff right here that doesn't follow it perfectly it's not going to have too big of problems but this right here is not perfectly straight you wouldn't be like oh this thing bends around the line like that you're just over you're looking at it too much uh there'll be some mosaic but not a ton but so definitely review it i mean it's on the test it's definitely on there um it's the relationship between two categorical variables and no outliers means you want no outliers this would be bad right here we'll try to make it obvious on the test and this right here does not suffer from plot thickening plot thickening would be if it had some sort of thickening on either side so this would be plot thickening but also plot thickening can be either side of it plot thickening could be down here we'll make it obvious if it has like a plot thickening so plot thickening is where it gets thicker or thinner on either side so it's technically heteroscedasticity favorite word of the day so um i need like a word of the day and heteroscedasticity pops up i forget i have things i forget i have things on my board I need a sound effect for that i don't i don't have them integrated into my teaching style yet um residual yeah so you can make a residual plot of this the residual plot of this would just be making the line flat and what should residual plots show like a little bit of i went here then i went here then i went here then i did another swivel and i did that 
if you notice, I'm trying to draw the same pattern. If you isolate key things Brian's trying to draw with his horrible art skills, he's drawing the same pattern. And you could, if you notice, if you were to like pull the axes, you could like, the residual plot is probably gonna zoom in on it more like, I can't zoom in anymore. It's gonna zoom in like this, ah! <laughs> You're going to see it a lot closer up. And you would see these weird things, but I mean, you're overlooking at it there if you're looking at that. Like, what I'm trying to point out is visually, when you do it in jump, it's going to stretch it so you really only see that in your window. Like, it it might look a little different, but it's just due to the orientation of the stretching of it. And so you might, and you might be like, oh, that looks a little different, but it's just the way it's been like augmented to change how it looks. Um, but it will still be the same graphic from up above. And it's because everything on this prediction line right here is now a zero residual. So you can see like where we have our negative residuals and our positive residuals, negative, positive residuals right there. So all of this right here is a residual plot, which is a diagnostic tool for regression to let us examine residuals. We should see nothing interesting. The line being flat, the line will always be flat, but then it should go around the line. And they all add up to zero. Great note from Kyle right there. Kyle, 20 points. That's a great note. All the residuals add up to zero because they kind of go around the line like that. They're just above and below because it's the line of best fit, the line of least squares. It reduces the sums of squares error, or yeah, gives the maximum reduction to the sums of squared error. Don't know sums of squared error. Um, mosaic plots, I think were mentioned in correlation. Okay, I got to speed run those. Um, correlation has four ways of talking about it. This is in the review yesterday a good bit. We have strength, direction, form, and unusual features. That's a key note. So make sure you know what strength, direction, form, and unusual features are. Strength goes from negative one to positive one, where negative one and positive one have equal strength. So negative one and positive one. Negative one is perfect negative. It would follow a perfect line going down. And positive one is perfect positive. So it has to perfectly be on there. So those might be close to like, in truth, this might like be negative 0 0.98. And this might be positive 9.7. Which of these is stronger? Um, <laughs> thank you, Tracy. So good to see you, Tracy. Good morning, Tracy. So Tracy, show Tracy, you're one of the top point getters, but they are going crazy with their points. And we track it all via Streamlabs right now. And look, they already know that the left one is stronger because it's closer to negative one right there. The strength right there, Tracy, so good to see you and great job, Tracy. So this is mini term and we got like 70 people in the class and we got 50 people watching live. We've done really well and they're doing excellently. And I was telling them about your guys' class that your guys' class had some of the highest grades we've ever had. And right now um, they are, they're, they're making a run for it. They're trying to do better. So thank you so much for swinging. You can hang out, Tracy. I appreciate it. And so they know that this is the stronger one because it's closer to negative one. Now you could get these in a correlation matrix. A correlation matrix would be, uh, oops, I don't want correlation matrix. Correlation matrix looks the following way, where you correlate a whole bunch of different things. And you do see that this has one, one, one. A lot of times this side is blanked out because they just repeat. And so, sorry, these are just, oh, it's so hard to write so small. So the correlation between A and B is like, if you do variable A versus variable B <clears throat> is 98. The correlation between A and C is A is 99. And the correlation between B and C, if you notice, this is all combinations of everything that can be correlated. The reason we have a one-to-one -one correlation because A tells you A, because if you know someone's age, you know someone's age, if that was age. If you know somebody's weight, you know someone's weight. If you know someone's height, you know someone's height. It gives you all the information right there. Uh, the reason this side, once again, is not showing up is because it would just be a repeat of these numbers. I've seen correlation matrices that show that, though. Correlation matrices are used to correlate multiple variables. So if you have multiple, like, quantitative variables. And that is the QQ condition. And so how many conditions are there? I want to see it on these Frenzy Fridays. Frenzy Fridays right here. We've got an extra credit button. I don't know if Tracy saw this earlier, but for 20 points on these Frenzy Friday. I want to see, oh, wait, how many conditions are there for correlation? Uh-oh. Oh, no, I've tricked everybody. No one's gotten the extra credit yet. For correlation, how many conditions are there? Morgan is first right there to say three. You got it. For correlation, it's only QQ straight enough. No outliers. How many conditions are there for regression? 
There we go. Buttons. Nice job right there. There are four for regression. QQ straight enough. No outliers. Plot doesn't thicken. So you guys got it. You got some extra credit right there for the three conditions for correlation. And then, which are QQ straight enough. No outliers. And then the four conditions for regression, which are QQ straight enough. No outliers. Plot doesn't thicken. So we got it right there. Three for correlation, four for regression. Jack, thank you so much. Another 20 to Jack right there. Saying it in the chat, making sure we know it and understanding what's going on right here. I think that's got it for review. And then mosaics. Uh, wait. <laughs> uh, mosaics. And remember, check out the Kahoot if you want. I think the Kahoot was a big help yesterday. Um, so check out the Kahoot. I answered a lot of questions. We even had a visitor at the end. We played, we played a Kahoot. We did a fake Kahoot. Sam helped out. There we go. Okay. So here it is. We've got, we've got here that you watch the Kahoot. Yes. And you watch the Kahoot. No. Watch the Kahoot. Yes. Watch the Kahoot. No. And we've got here pass the test and we've got here fail the test. Pass the test, fail the test. So both of these variables are what variables? Both of these variables are what variables? I don't know why so many people still fail the test, but that's at least better. Both of these variables are what? Both of these variables are what? Pass, you got it, Claire. Nice job. 20 points to Claire right there and Ben and Sam. So Frenzy Friday, crazy points on Friday. We're just, points on Friday are just crazy. Mega Mondays, Frenzy Fridays. I got to write down all these things. Someone, did someone send me all of them? I need to write them all down. Wacky. What are Tuesdays? 20 point Tuesdays. Oh, wait. Mega Monday, 20 point Tuesdays, Wacky Wednesdays, uh, Thinking Thursdays, and Frenzy Fridays. Uh, thank you, Hannah. I'll try to remember, Hannah, that you have them in the email to me so I can make sure. I, I think I know them all now. Um, ben, that's awesome. You make, you make it. You guys make this class right here. And so we have here whether or not you watch the Kahoot and whether or not you passed. Which of these shows an association between watching the Kahoot and passing the test? Oh, wait, I did the wrong colors. Okay, pass is red. That's not a happy color, though. Space pen, you, you betrayed us. Space pen. <laughs> the second one shows an association between whether or not you pass or fail the test based on watching the Kahoot. And to go to the future topics, this would have a low p-value here. So if Tracy's still here, Tracy, would we, we reject the null? They're going to start telling the answer, though, because I think they might know. Would we reject the null right here? Tracy should know. Would we, and Tracy's going to review. We're going to keep your stash knowledge fresh right here if you're still in the chat. So would we reject the null? People are already saying it. Reject the null because the p-value is low. People know it. Reject the null. The p-value is low, which means we have evidence that there is an association. So I'm going to teach you guys a chapter that we'll be doing it for our last chapter. The null hypothesis for this would be uh, passing is independent of Kahoot. The alternative would be passing is not independent of Kahoot, of watching the Kahoot. That's what that means. So if you notice, what are we going to say? I reject the null. Ah, oh, there's no correlation for this because it's not QQ. So there's no correlation because it's not quantitative quantitative correlation is for two quantitative variables the i'm not going to say it i'll tell you guys during break i'm not going to say what i'm going to say though i'm not going to say it because i'll confuse people and i don't want to explain why it happens you guys are like say it no 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 eat one over squared i didn't say that you're like <laughs> so the one over here this would have a high p value so this one right here, if we were analyzing graphic one, we would fail to reject the null. And we would say that we continue to believe that passing is independent. Like that it doesn't play a role. Now these, these don't perfectly line up. This is a, another Brian pet peeve. We need that graphic. Um, people look at this and they would say, well, a little bit more people are failing the Kahoot who, I mean, failing the test who didn't watch the Kahoot. But the differences here between these are most likely what? The differences we see in graphic one are most likely by what? You know it, get some points right here. You know the answer to it, you know the answer. The differences we see in graphic one are most likely due to what? You got it, random chance, you got it. 
those differences are likely by random chance. That's what the p-value there means, is that the differences we observe are likely by random chance given the null is true. So if the two things are independent, these differences we observe in graphic one are likely due to random chance. The differences we observe in graphic two are what? Not likely due to random chance given the null is true. Given that these two things are independent, the differences we observe in that mosaic plot are not likely due to random chance, meaning we reject the null and we have evidence that you passing or failing the test is not independent. Kind of means dependent right there. I like to use not um, because it's the complement of the other, because you can say like something is independent, something is not independent. Although independent and dependent are kind of complements in and of themselves. I just like not because it's, it's like when we do the complement, we'll just say it's not this. Like either you are in your 30s or you're not in your 30s. One of those must be true. Ah! <laughs> so, um, yep. Yeah. So how um, does this make more sense? How do you guys feel about p-values now? Do you guys feel a little bit better about p-values? I want you guys to be in another class and someone's like, I don't understand p-values. And you guys explain it to them. Exactly. I mean, working out to the crab ray would be awesome. You know what? We've got so much randomness. It's time now for a whole chapter on randomness. I got to do that transition right there. I tried to set up the buttons to do the transitions, but maybe i'll have to look at how they updated my stream deck because i might be able to make it i just can't have it automatically selected because i wish the buttons would select powerpoint as my option but i have to like click down there we got it the screen is sized up right because i was working on that before the if you see me in chat like five minutes before or three minutes before i've probably got everything set up and i'm just chilling out because i was like okay everything's set up perfectly this morning until the slides change orientation on me okay you ready i got to do my thing to remember when we start the lecture got to put the green check mark i was using those to figure out here we go with new lecture for today. Let's do this. So randomness, we've been using randomness all throughout. Randomness is on the next test. So don't worry if you're watching this. Well, worry when it's on next test. And then we'll start doing that a little bit later. You got it, Josh. So randomness, randomness is how statisticians use statistics as a tool. It's all the time. Is that on the next slide? Yeah, it's on the next slide. So we have here that randomness is not about events that could happen. It's about us trying to understand the world and trying to actually figure out and actually make models. I, I can't tell you how important randomness is in statistics. One of my biggest pet peeves, I got so many pet peeves. What's wrong with me? Is when people say, well, that's random. And they say like in a bad way. Well, even our normal model, you can use the normal model to describe events and the normal model is random. And we have some, I wish I could show you the video. Type this and I can't show it on stream, but do this after class, Seth Bling, Mario, uh, that'll probably work. No, cause he did some speed runs. Mario or um, do this, do this Mario Kart. There we go. Seth Bling Mario Kart or Seth Bling Mario Kart, Mario uh, randomness. You should find a channel, Seth Bling, really great guy, worked at Microsoft, I believe, and uh, programmer, speedrunner, uh, makes great videos, and he uses randomness to beat video games. So Seth Bling uses randomness to beat video games. You're like, how can you beat a video game with randomness? It's called a genetic algorithm. So genetic algorithms are based on biological evolution with literally the terms like a uh, family and a genome. So you can see this thing evolve over time and it learns from past generations and passes down that information. So you, you watch Mario, it's so cool. The first thing Mario does is he just like looks up and they just like, like over each generation, he keeps learning. He's like, he just like looks up and he can't win the game. And then eventually the first thing Mario, who can tell me for 20 points, the first random thing Mario learns to do the first random thing Mario chooses to do that helps him kind of win a game is what? Think about how you usually win a Mario game. The first random thing he chooses to do is what? The first random thing he would choose to do. Ah, jumping's good. Run. I'll take run from Needy right there. Run to the right. The first random thing he does is press right. And probably walk. I'll take walk right there from Jared because he doesn't know how to run yet. He just kind of goes to the right. The first random thing he chooses to do that helps him start winning the game is go to the right. And then when we look at this, we see, okay, 
this is a good thing. And that's what the model shows us. And so he just goes to the right and then he runs into a Goomba. So then Mario needs to learn how to jump over success successive generations. I mean, they use the terminology generations and species. So you should watch that video. Mario walks over and <laughs> Neil in 20 points. I like that right there. I like that a lot. So we don't think of randomness in statistics as something bad. We think of randomness in statistics as something that helps us explain the world around us. Randomness can be used to make models, can be used to learn. It's a tool. It can be used to make predictions. It can tell us what can happen in these, what we think is unpredictable, but it's usually just random and random is like good. Now, what we're talking about here is we're talking about simulations. We get into keywords. Whenever you see a word in red, you should know what it means. We need to have something representative of the population. These are things that could be on test one. And we may be like, Brian, we're in, what are you, we're in chapter randomness. Well, we talked about very early on, I'm mentioning this because it is important. What is a population? A population is all people or things we want to understand. What is a sample? A sample is a selection of items in the population. It's, it's a sample. Like imagine if I said sample these donuts, you would take a few of the donuts. If I said take the population of donuts, you would take all the donuts. I didn't eat enough breakfast this morning. But a sample of donuts is like when you go to Krispy Kreme and you buy 10 donuts. Now, hopefully that's representative of the donuts they make. If you went to Krispy Kreme and you only bought glazed donuts, is that a representative sample from Krispy Kreme? If you only bought glazed donuts from Krispy Kreme, would that be a representative sample of their donuts? Why or why not? No. Great job right there. 20 points for Josh, Claire, and Michael. So, and Needy, and Cole. Frenzy Fridays. Because they make donuts that are not glazed. Because it'd be, it might be representative of their glazed donuts, depending on how you get those donuts. But 20 glazed donuts from Krispy Kreme is not representative of Krispy Kreme donuts because there's variation we're not accounting for, which that's what statistics tries to analyze is variation. And so you look at how we're using these terms and trying to understand what's going on right here. It's a subset. Yes, Tracy's right. That's a subset of their donuts. So you might understand a subset. Nice work, Tracy. So we have here that we want representative samples of the population. And our randomness right here is going to help us simulate certain things. Simulation is very, very important. Very, very important. So we've got here a basketball player. And what you could actually do. Now, I will say this. Um, one of my friends, Merch, who drew the drawing for me, former roommate, um, we'd always be watching basketball. And then they'd miss their first free throw. And they would say, this guy's like a 60% free throw shooter. And then Merch would be like, he's going to make it. And I'd be like, no, no, it's not about... You can't use past events to predict future events, but you kind of can with basketball a little bit. So I'm kind of hurting our example here a little bit because if a basketball player misses a free throw, they might change how they're shooting the ball. So an assumption with this, a key assumption of this problem right here is this, is that at all times, <laughs> getting into 20 points for Joseph, getting into some simulation theory right there. At all times, it's just a simu it's just a teeny verse, Joseph or a mini verse. It's just that it's just a simulation within a simulation. Suppose a basketball player is a 75% free throw shooter. And so with this right here, we have that they're going to always shoot 75%. So that's an assumption about this. Now there, you could do an advanced simulation, which would account for how they change. But at this point, we're just simulating that they are um, a 75% free throw shooter, and they will be constantly a 75% free throw shooter. I guess a constant 75% free throw shooter. And so here we go. This is how we could simulate it. Boom. Just take some coins. You can simulate it. But do you know what's even better? You guys know. You know I'm going to do it. And you know what we've done? I think we've covered the whole lecture. Because now we just get to practice. That's the whole lecture. <laughs> I told you guys it would be a short lecture. But now i got to practice. Here's the two key learning objectives, and we're going to start practicing this here in a moment. Simulations. I'm going to give you some keynotes. Get ready for some keynotes. Start writing these down. You can use to do simulations. You can use things like coins, dice, or, you know, like, so coins can be used to do simulations. Like, this is simulating a 75% basketball shooter with coins. But you could go over here and just simulate it with uh, random number generators. You can also use random number tables. We don't show those. So you've got three ways to kind of simulate random numbers. You could do it with like coins, dice, or objects like that. Does that make sense? Coins, dice, you could drop a coin, you could roll a dice, all that stuff. 
you could um, do it with random number generators and random number, number generators are just like random number tables. That's how you can simulate these random numbers. So that's how we get random numbers. Two, I guess another keynote for this is we can simulate real world events. It says right here, like some things are too complicated to simulate. Like I'm basically telling you these notes, like you can always read the slides if you want. I'm gonna say everything that's in the slides, not like sometimes I say it on a different slide just cause I've done this slide a lot. But um, you build a simulation to simulate things. And I'll be showing you this in a second. Sam, 20 points, great note in the chat right there. Um, we have that the better a simulation is, the more accurate it is. Some simulation may take miles or years to be more realistic, like a flight simulator. Great, Terry updated that. They used to see something different. Um, sometimes it's very hard to make a good simulation, but we try to simulate events and simulations use randomness simulations use randomness to a lot of them use randomness because you have to generate the random event you're trying to simulate um must understand it and another keynote there's a huge keynote which often appears on the test how can you make a simulation better more trials more trials watch as we show that a simulation can be made better with more don't do it brian don't do it don't open up our studio don't do it well it's so much easier in our studio so much easier. Stop. Okay. Watch this. You ready? We have what here, what happens when someone shoots a free throw. So let's say free throw. And from a fr free throw, they will either make it, make it, make it, or miss it. Does everyone understand? I've put in here something that now this person is a what free throw shooter? This person is a what free throw shooter? This person is a what free throw shooter? Can you see it? Tell me if they're, what, what are they? You see it, there's 75%, just like we were doing with coins. Just like we did with coins a moment ago, this person is a 75% free throw shooter. And so now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna sample one uh, from the free throw shooters. So from free throw, I'm gonna sample one. You see it says, what do you wanna sample from? That's what the X means and the size is this. So I'm sampling one observation. So what would you bet on? Are they going to make it or miss it? Okay, we go up. You're going up to the. You're going up to the hoop right here, and you're going to shoot. That's how I shoot. <laughs> I shoot like this. <laughs> Do you make it or miss it? Oh, I shot like that. I, I hope. <laughs> yes, that was completely. That was random. I did not plan that. I, I promise you, that was not planned. I missed it. It's because I shot like this. Okay, wait, wait. I need some advice. Who's going to give me some advice? You guys got to tell me how to shoot right here. Funny enough, I'm still a 75% free throw shooter. But guys, give me some advice. What do I need to do? What's a key advice? I need some key advice on how to shoot free throws. <laughs> Who's going to give me advice? I did. I didn't. I was hoping it'd be missed. There was a 25% chance. There was a 25% chance on that. And I did miss it. No, I needed advice. Shoot with your... <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm going to shoot with my legs. There we go. I don't know how. I, I threw the ball right there. That was some good advice right there. Don't use your arm. <laughs> For Brian. <laughs> For Brian... <laughs> That's what that's what they had Shaq doing, right? They had Shaq doing that, and Shaq. Okay, wait, okay I'm gonna take uh, Tracy's advice right here. You ready? Granny shot. We're gonna throw. Okay, it's, I can't. I'm behind a desk, so there we go. Granny shot right there. Oh, you guys are giving some great advice. So um, follow through. Okay, Thomas, we're gonna see the follow through advice. Oh, there we go. Follow through the shot. I'm you guys, man. You guys' advice is awesome. Great stuff right there. Okay, so here's the thing though. Do you think, let, let's just think about this logically for a moment. If someone gave you some advice and like someone said, this is how you should shoot a free throw and you shot one free throw with their advice. Oh, <laughs> I'm so bad at shooting free throws. I didn't quite understand. You like use your legs for the power and your arm for the, makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> well, it worked, Jared. It worked. Whatever I did worked, at least for that one. If you were to um, use someone's advice and shoot one free throw, and then you were to base how well you think that advice off of one, like imagine if Shaq was told, which he was, like do the, the granny shot. That's what I think they call that. So Shaq, like if Shaq did that and he missed his first free throw with that, should Shaq do it again or just give up on it? If Shaq tried it one time and he missed, should he try it again to see if it's working or should he just give up and say, it didn't work one time, I'm done? You guys already know the answer. You understand how it works. Our understanding of the world applies to statistics. That if we're doing a simulation, you don't run a simulation one time. 
You run it with more trials. You use more trials. This is a key note. It could be on the test that a simulation becomes more accurate and helps us better understand reality when we increase the trials of it. So if Shaq, if we're trying, we're kind of jumping out of the world of what a simulation is, but if Shaq wants to better understand how good of a free thrower he is using a certain style, like a granny shot, he shouldn't just do it one time, not even like five times. Really? Will Chamberlain did that? I'll have to look at that. I'll have to watch some cha videos. So watch this. You ready? What if I do a hundred? Whoops. Oh, I know why. Because I have to sample with replacement. There we go. So if you look right here, here's a hundred observations of me making free throws. So this might be kind of hard for you to analyze right here, but take a guess. What would be your guess of the amount of time I make it? What would be the guess of the amount of times I make it? Seventy-five. Ah, oh, but look at that simulation. In that simulation, I only made it 69% of the time. Whoa, I made it exactly 75, 78. These are all simulations right here. Like I can just keep simulating different amounts like this. Another 75. 75 is kind of the most probable here. And you know what we could do? I wonder if I could do it. Let me try this. It should be the first observation in this. Okay, cool. So, and then I want to convert it to as numeric. I'm going to write code for one minute here because I think I can do it. So this will convert this to just a number or a name. There, it's just a number now. So every time I run this, it's just going to tell me how many free throws I made right there. And then I'm going to do a really cool code called a for loop. So the for loop is going to do this whole thing a thousand times. I'm going to do the same thing we're doing, but a thousand times. And I need to store this right here as percent made. And that needs to be an open vector. And then we're going to go to percent. And inside of percent, we're going to store position i. And we're going to run this code. We're going to store that every time it runs. And there it is, ran a thousand times. So now, literally, I ran this code right here 1,000 times and stored all the observations. And this should be stored right there. And guess what we can do with this? We can turn this into a histogram and 100 points for the first person who tells me the shape of this histogram. Review question right now. 100 points, first person to tell me the shape of this histogram. 100 points, first person to tell me the shape of this histogram. You get all your Frenzy Friday points. That was a frenzy right there. 100 points, first person to tell me the shape of this histogram. You got it, Sam. It's normal. Pretty normal. I'll tell you, that's pretty normal. That's normal enough. There it is. There is a hundred simulations and pretty normal looking right there. And you know what? I think this is what we do in the notes because we do in the notes, we do it right here. And do we not draw it out? We used to put in the numbers. We used to. Old notes did that. But this is why I love coding. This is, and you can see it behind me right here. There's the histogram. And this was a simulation. So I want you to just think about what we've drawn right here. This is showing us what would happen if someone took 100 free throws. Is it? We can even do the mean standard deviation of this. Via this simulation right here, we can find out what we would expect. All we have to do is take this code right here. And we got some fun coming up. Don't worry, we got a lot of fun coming up. And look at it. The mean and the standard deviation. The mean is what? The mean is 75. And I could redo the simulation again. And now the mean is 75.19. So that was me redoing the simulation of someone doing 100 free throws, and then I simulated that a 1,000 times. That's a lot to think about. I had someone take 100 free throws 1,000 times. Does that, make, does that make sense when I say that? I had someone take 100 free throws 1,000 different times. And then I looked at how that distribution looks, and we saw what we expected. So I had someone take 100 free throws, and then I had them do that 1,000 times. So you can see it in the code right here where it says 1,000. And then this is the 100 free throws. So this is a, an iterative process of doing it. So don't you don't have to know the code. You're not coding in this class. But it's the power of code, which I love. So um, 100,000. See, watch. We could do this simulation 100,000 times. It'll work. 
it's taken a moment. Now I just had someone take 100 free throws 100,000 times. It should be able to do it. This is a good computer, so it does take a moment. There we go. And there it is. Look, wait, 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 wait. What do you guys notice about this? I love it. Neeland, you get your 100 points because look at what the simulation is doing now. The simulation is even closer to... Whoa, that's so cool. 20 points of power right there. The simulation is even closer, and this simulation probably more accurately tells us what we would expect when someone takes 100 free throws and they are a 75. It's even more accurate because I increased the number of trials in the simulation. This right here is not the trials um, because we're saying what would happen when someone shoots 100 free throws and they are a 75% free throw shooter. It's more accurate. And look at the distribution. It still looks the same though because it still has the same mean and about the same still standard deviation. The standard deviation is very close to 4.317675. And I'll tell you, I'll show you another trick here in a second. Then we'll play a fun game right before we go to break. Um, but when you look at this, and we made we made the simulation more accurate by increasing the number of trials. Um, when you look at this, kind of just think in your head for a moment. You would expect someone who's a 75% free throw shooter, let's say if they shoot 100 free throws across their season, you'd expect them to make between what and what. Just don't even pretend you don't even know stats. If someone over a season shoots 100 free throws, you'd expect them, don't even look at the numbers because the numbers kind of give it away too. But just think of the number line. Like if someone said, oh, I'd expect them to make about between this and this. If they're 75%, well, that's where the mean is at. You'd expect them to make between what and what. And now we're doing chapter five again. That's a, that's, I'll, I'll take that Jack right there for 20 points. That is about two standard deviations. Yeah, you would expect, and I actually, Jack, I do like that answer a lot. That's two standard deviations about and if you notice, the standard deviation is almost five. It's not quite five. So I guess it would be, who's, has anyone said, it'd be like 67 to 83. So it would be 67 to 83 would be 95%. But even if you kind of round it to 65 to 85, which would be like 99% of the time, you could figure it out. You could say, um, we could take the standard deviation right here. And we could take 60. So we could do 65 minus... 75 minus 65 um and i'm using their act oh cool i'll use this the simulated mean so what is brian finding right now what did brian just find oh and i reversed them observation minus mean what's the it's the same thing what did brian just find another review question what did brian just find that is the what It's observation minus mean over standard deviation, z-score. That is the z-score. That is, so when you just look at it visually, just think about the numbers visually right here. We are finding how far below the mean is 67. So here's 60, or 65, excuse me. 65 is right here, and I'm finding how many standard deviations. Now, I know that the, um, the number line makes you think that almost this is like one, two, three standard deviations, but the number line here doesn't have z-scores on it. This is just a number line given to us. It's kind of close to what a standard deviation is because it's five. The the standard deviation here is five. The bin widths would be really hard to calculate. They're like 2.2 .2 or something. That would not be a good test question. Um, but this has got it right here. Does everyone kind of understand how useful and, I don't know, like simulations to me are like fun, quick, useful. We're going to do another review right here of simulations. Don't leave yet because now comes a major thing. This is on top of Frenzy Friday. So there's, there'll be some people who get to play and some people who don't. So let's go and let's check it out. I feel so bad saying that if you're still here, stay, hang out, because we're still reviewing. And let's go. <clears throat> Come my throat. Um, I need to go over to... Oh, we need the music. What am I doing when I'm searching for stuff? I remember playing music. So I'm pulling up some important stuff I need. Should put it in a spot where I'll always remember where it's at. Okay. So I've almost found it. We're about to play the price is right. We are about to play the price is right. So stay tuned because the price is right is coming up next. The price is right coming up next. Found it.
here we are. We have the price is right. So let's do this. Okay, hopefully everything's working because they updated R. Let's see. We need three contestants. We need the X-Files themes. It is from Punch-Out. Um, I know, it's so quick. We're already, this is like the halfway point, Tracy. We still have a week and a half left after today. I know. Tracy is going to be player number four in The Price is Right. Random, Tracy's in The Price is Right. So who's going to be our three players in The Price is Right? Who's going to be it? You get 20 points for playing and 100 points for winning. This is on top of Frenzy Friday. So we have here The Price is Right. Let's see. Who's the three players? Oh, we see Jared, Kyle, and Jack. And Tracy's at the end here. Okay. So let's see right here. I'm going to see if my function loads. So let's check this out. Let's see if everything works right here. Okay. It looks like it worked. So we need right here, everything loaded. We've got Jared. Was it Jared? We'll, we'll play another round, so get ready. We've got Jared, Kyle. Oh, no, I did. Oh, Trace, I'll have to do in the next one. Kyle and Jack right here. Okay. Jared, it is your turn. I need to see Jared spin the wheel right here. Jared, spin the wheel. Now, if you didn't know it on The Price is Right, while well, Jared's about to spin the wheel right here, on The Price is Right, with a big wheel, you have to spin as close as you can to a dollar. You get two spins, so Jared's first spin right here is 15 cents. Now, Jared, you could stop. You're the first person. You could go over. I don't know. What does the chat think? <laughs> great spin, Jared. <laughs> um, so, great. Neil, and that's awesome. Neil gets another 20 right here. Remember, if you play The Price is Right, you can break the Frenzy Friday rules. Only the people playing The Price is Right get. So, what do you think, Jared? He's trying to get as close as he can to a dollar without going over. The numbers on The Price is Right, as you can see right here, are generated from numbers, where's my numbers? Right here. Here's where I'm generating the random numbers that you're seeing. They are from five to 100 going up by five. So they go five, 10, 15, 20, all the way up to 100. And we're generating one random number. Jared says he wants to spin again. Jared, oh my gosh, Jared, what happened? <laughs> At least you didn't spin over. At least you didn't overspin. But you have 20. That is one of the, that is, that is one of the lowest possible combinations. The lowest possible combination is 10 with five and five. So, you know what? If I was on The prices Right and I spun five and I was the first person to ever spin, I might just, like, not spin again because I might, like, hold the record as, like, the lowest spin on The prices Right. Like, like oh, no. So, oh, we're going to crab rate for the winner. You got it. Kyle, Kyle, spin that wheel. He's feeling good. So, he spins the wheel. 75. Ooh, Kyle, that's a good spin, but you've got one more person after you and they could win. So, Kyle... Do you want to spin again or stop? I want to see stop or spin again. Kyle goes up to the wheel. He's going to stop or spin again. It's You could go for it all and spin again, or you could not spinning. He does not spin. Okay, Jack. Jack right here. Spin the wheel, Jack. Jack can spin 80, 85, 90. So here we go. We're, we, need, we need Jack. Oh, he says spin. Jack Scott right here. He says spin. He just beat them all. Just just out of the blue right there. Out of the blue. Won the whole thing. Now, Jack, you could go for a dollar. I'll give you 200 points if you get a dollar. <laughs> You've got 100 right now. <laughs> so there was, a, there was a time we played this and two people got... He hasn't won yet. Do you want to spin again? Stop or spin, Jack. Stop or spin. You'll stay. Jack, you are the winner. You get the crab rape. You earned the crab rape right there. So Jack won with 90 cents. But guess what? It's round two right now. We're gonna have we're gonna have four more players right here because Tracy's gonna go first. I think it's Tracy with an I. Tracy, I have to add in. Don't autocomplete. Good, autocomplete. It's Tracy with an I, correct? I think. I think. I think. Um. So we've got here Kate, Taylor, and Skylar. Kate, Taylor, and Skylar. Kate, Taylor. And Skylar. Skylar with an E. Okay, Tracy, spin the wheel. Show them. Show them the power of last semester. Tracy's going to spin a dollar right here. I want to see it. Let's see it. Let's see what happens. Oh, Tracy with a Y. I'm very sorry. Very sorry. I don't know where I get. Uh, oh, no. Ah! Oh, no. It's real. Oh, wait, Jared. Holy mackerel. <laughs> Literally, it's rigged, Jared. It's rigged. Oh my gosh. Literally, Jared said that in the chat and then it happened. What was the probability that would happen? Does anyone know what's the probability that Jared would say that and it would happen? What are the chances? What are the chances? 
What are the chances of that? <laughs> One in 20, you got it. You can see the code right here. It's generating from these numbers. Tracy, do you want to spin again? You got another spin. Do we have another spin again? Do you want to spin again? It's one in 20 that she'll get the number she needs. I'm thinking it's a yes. Sure. Oh, you're, you're still in it. Kate, we need a spin from Kate right here. Kate, spin that wheel. I want to see spin in the chat from Kate right here. Tracy's still in it. It's all right. No worries. Kate spins the wheel. You're tied. You could both get 100 points. You could both get 100 points or you could go and spin again. What are you going to do, Kate? Top right here or spin again? Now, it's more likely you'll go over, but I mean, that's you still get 20 for playing. So Kate says spin again. 85. Good spin right there. Good spin. That's a tough number to beat. Taylor's got to spin now. And now, Taylor, Taylor, we're going to go right to 11. So don't leave. Don't miss the fun. Let's see right here. Taylor says spin the wheel. 20. It's lucky number 20. So. Do we have it? Do we have it? Do, what do you want to do, Taylor? Spin again. 55. This is so crazy. Now we got Skylar. Skylar, spin the wheel. Skylar, spin the wheel. Who's got it? Skylar, spin that wheel. Let's see. 45. Oh, no. I love it when people get the dollar. It's so much fun. Skylar, I'm thinking you're wanting to spin again because you get the 20 for playing, but you get the 100 for winning. Spin. Skyler, Skyler gets 200 out of the blue, gets the super crazy, insane Frenzy Friday 200 points for being here and winning at the last moment. Complete and utter randomness for Skyler right there. Beast mode. I promise you nothing you saw right now was set up when people said 20 that happened. Uh, when we had bad spins at the start, it happened. It was all random. This code right here isn't, I mean, I could, I could code something to like, you know, like make that happen. But this, if, if someone wants to see the code that I put in here, you, it's all here. You could like pause the screen if you know how to code and be like, yeah, it's all random. Every time you spin the wheel. What's interesting about this is let's play one more time. Oh yeah. One more time. We got it. <laughs> you ready? Three more players in the chat. Who's playing? You'd be like, if, it, if you can't play it again, then maybe it was rigged. Who's playing? We got Neeland. And I think Morgan asked right there. So Morgan asked and William. Okay, Neeland, spin the wheel. Neeland, go ahead and spin that wheel. What do we got from Neeland? I'll, here we go. Neeland spins the wheel. 40. Do you want to spin again or not, Neeland? Do you want to spin again or not? Spin. Do you want to spin again or not? Let's see. Yes or no to spin again. Spin again. That's our first over. Oh, no. That 95 would have been so good at the start. Morgan, spin that wheel. Type spin to spin that wheel. Morgan walks up, spins the wheel. What does Morgan get? We need a little punch out in the background right here. So Morgan spins the wheel. 45. Spin the wheel again, Morgan, or not? Spin the wheel again, Morgan, or not? What do you want? It, there's only one more person after you. Spin again. 200 points for Morgan right there. That was really smart to ask to play it again because you just got 200 points. That's amazing. Great job, Morgan, right there. Yep, but we now we got to go for a tie, William. William, you got to spin the wheel and you got to tie Morgan right here. So, Morgan or so, William, spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. You got this. You got to go for it. Do you want to, do you just want to call it quits or do you want to spin the wheel again? Do you want to just call it quits? So, do you want to, yes or no? Well, not to calling it quits. <laughs> you got your 20 points, but you'd be like, not even going to try. Done. <laughs> Spin it again. Oh. So crazy, right? In the first game, people didn't really get any good spins. In the second game, no, in the first game, do we have some high ones? We could look back at the history of it. So the first game was pretty low spins and someone got a good spin at the end. The second game uh, was low spins. Everyone had to spin again. And then we had uh, Skyler get his second spin win. No one got 100 on their first spin. So you can, you know, run it a lot quicker. You can enter in five players here, call them player one, player two, player three, player five, and you could spin the wheel, get 80, spin again. There we go, 55, spin again. There we go, 95, spin again. So you can, you can just play the game. Still, we're not getting 100, but if you notice right here, the way the code works at the end, 
probably the hardest part of coding this for me, we'll, we'll pause here in a moment, was this code at the end right here, which is this code. Um, I think it works properly. It, what's funny is if you look what the code does, everyone is first classified as a what. <laughs> I first make everyone what's first. Because that's how I made the code work, I think. It only chooses the winner if the if the maximum was less. I think I did that pro properly, right? I've never had the code do it improperly, but it took me a while to get this code to do the thing I wanted it to do. First, I classify everyone as a loser. That's what this code right here does. It creates a data frame of their names. Like whatever your name is, it puts the name in, it puts the score in that you got. So as you're seeing right here is it gives your name as your name and the score is the score. So it sets those things. This is your result. And that's the result is the like what your result was. It's your spin one plus your spin two. You see the ifs and the for loops and all that good stuff. And then right here, um, the places only the winner is defined as the winner. So it goes through and it finds the person who, and I think I can't like even to me, I, I looked at this code again. And I was like, how do I get this to work? And um, because it wasn't putting the right winners in. So, and I think if there's a tie, both of them will become winners. I think so. It looks for the one that has the highest score that is less than or equal to 100. Yeah, I think this is this less than or equal comes to play right here. So if the max score, if the max score in the data frame is less than or equal to 100, then go inside of here. Yes. Okay, that's why this code exists. Because, no, wait, I don't know. My code works. <laughs> um, so let's take a five minute break right here. Let's take a five minute. Set a timer for five minutes. Okay. Five minutes and counting. Yep, UT students have access to R. R is completely free. R is completely free. Um, and so, yeah, it's pretty low right there. It's the chances. You would, I think you'd have a 5% chance because there's 20 numbers. Um, R is completely free. Learning how to do it, getting better at coding is a great skill. And I like to show it off every once in a while. Wash my hands again, touch the mic. And um, yeah, be right back. Five minute break. I'm back. One of our, we have a new thing, Tracy. It's Tracy. So if you, you can tell Tracy, what do you, what do you think about, um, is, are you still here, Tracy? You can type a yes in the chat if you're still here. I want to, we have a new graphic that I really like. It's my favorite. I show it to everyone who comes in who's, who's been in the class. But I'm going to try this weekend to make more graphics for each day. But we have, um, Mega Mondays. We'll be using this one again here. But that's my, and I think I'm going to update that this weekend, too, because I had some ideas last night to update it, and then I was doing more work otherwise. But um, we're going to try to make some graphics for each day. And it looks like this. That is so low on this slide. It's at the very, very bottom of it. And I, I never have a slide that has something that low on it. So I do you like this better, Tracy, than... I'd have to open Photoshop to do that. Like, Tracy's seen both ways. Let me do this. Two seconds. I'm just breaking stuff. I'm just breaking it all. Breaking all the screens. I don't have that one set up right anymore. You have, we have to set up certain things and we have to have them. Like I've got this set up now. I think is this. 
Is this right? Conference. There we go. So we've got the interview screen right here. We'll bring Julio back right here. There we go. Julio's back. <laughs> so we've got the screen. That is, we set this up when we were interviewing Julio, just in case. You see, I could move the, the, can I click my, where's my, it should be locked if it's not letting me move it. Where's my video? Video. The game woke me up. <laughs> um, where is it? Da, 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 da. Main screen capture interview. Black magnet. There we go. Yes, there we go. There we go. Now it looks like the microphone is there. That's better. So um, yeah, this is for when we interview people. So I'm hoping we can do more interviews. So yeah, we've got a lot of different things. A little bit of green around me. They call that what do they call that? They call that a I don't know. It's called something with the green screen. So yeah, we've got this. Um, if you guys know anyone, if you know anyone who'd like to do interviews for stats because I'd really like to get uh, Arian Foster on here. He likes to do a lot of internet stuff, so I'd love to get him on here. Um, Julio's always up for doing interviews and talking to you guys. Maybe I'll just have him like call in. Tracy was in the, uh, the Julio thing. Um, so maybe I'll just have him call in and say hey to you guys and give you guys, would you guys like that? If like, if I said to Julio, like if he came in just for five minutes to give you guys some like a pep talk for test two, I bet I could call him up and like be like, hey Julio, um, if you wouldn't, if you want, come in and, and just give him a five minute, like, there's the timer. But he, man, he's been, I just, he just is so like giving to students and everything. I'm just, you know, and he's a student right now too, but I just think it's awesome. I like, I like people helping each other out and I bet he'd be up for that to be like, you know, just give him a pep talk and be like, you guys got this, you know, like, you know, go Vols. Like maybe I'll have him. You know what I should do? I should have him film something like, hey, this is Julio Brabone, and I'm just here to tell you, you got this. Go Vols or something like that. And then I could use that for multiple semesters. So maybe I'll talk to him and just say, hey, could you, if you want, we'll record like a 10 second, 15 second, you got this, go Vols. And uh, we could play that before test for students like this is Julio Brabone. Just want to give you guys, you guys got this, you know, study up, work hard, go Vols. So, um, yeah, I bet that that'd probably be the best utilization because then I could reuse it. So, and and I really appreciate like we've had so much help with this, and I just want to say that that's how these things work. Is like, you know, I don't make all these things myself. I make some of them, um, but I'm kind of I'm kind of the glue. Like I bring all the parts together, so I'm the glue for everything. I I make everything work. <laughs> But there's a lot of things that I didn't create and um, and a lot of people who helped me out. Like I could, if I had to buy everything. Also, um, I just wanted to give a huge, I'm like, like, thank you so much to Jason Jason Greenway, who you guys will probably get to see. I think Tracy knows Jason or like has seen him on stream and stuff. He, if I didn't learn from him, I would have never been able to do this stuff because I wanted to do this stuff. And then when I told Jason, his knowledge and my knowledge together made everything work. But you have to tell you just <laughs> hell yeah right there. Okay, I think it's time for assignments. I think it's time for assignments. I think it's time for assignments. I'm pulling up my Pearson. I think it's time for assignments. We did some review today. Got some assignments done. Oh, let me play music. Transition screens, music, Mega Man music. I need way more music though, because I've already played my songs a lot of times. I want to hear it. Nope, I punch out. Chapter 8 homework. Only two questions? We got this. Let's do this. It is time for some homework. Have your homework out. So let's see. <laughs> I wonder if I can play that without getting... I like, I'm always like, hopefully I don't have YouTube get mad at me. 
Um, you got it, Erica. We're doing chapter eight homework. Oh, I made a mistake. Here we go. Chapter eight homework right here. We got this. You ready? It is time for chapter eight homework. Okay. So how are we going to figure out the correlation between these two variables? Well, it looks like it's positive. It looks like correlation is appropriate because it's QQ straight enough. That's not really an outlier. It's like, anyone got any ideas how I can figure out correlation? Uh, maybe, Neil. I, we might, Neilan. We might. I'll try. You know what? I might do the homework. I might do both homeworks. Neilan, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do chapter eight homework, and then I'm going to do randomness homework. Then we'll loop back and do some quizzes. How does that sound to you, Neilan? Because there's a few tricky ones on randomness. I like the randomness a lot. It's probably my favorite. Square root, thank you so much, Jared, for helping me out right here finding this. When we want to find r from r squared, we have to square root r squared. We took a note yesterday that said r squared is r squared, and square root of r squared is r. But remember, they're not the same thing. So correlation is what we just found. This is correlation because it's the square root of r. It should like that. It likes it, of course. So we got this right here. Uh, interpret the slope and the intercept. Don't do it by looking at their answers. So we've got the bond, the price of a, the interest rate of a bond, years since 1950. So go vols. So this is 1950. Zero stands for 1950. So the intercept interpretation, which is on tonight's note taking quiz, is uh, the intercept is when x is equal to zero, we expect y to equal b zero. When x is equal to zero, we expect y to equal b zero. So when the years since 1950 are equal to zero, we expect the rate of interest to be 0.45. So it wants the slope. So slope is for each one unit increase in X, we expect Y to increase or decrease by B1, but it's positive. So for each one year since 1950, we expect the rate of increase, the rate percent increase to be 0.249. That's the percent increase in rate. So during this period, it increased by about this much right here. This is already in a percentage, so watch out. Two decimals. Oh, no, 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 I clicked the wrong button. So that's already in a percentage, and it started out from this, because that's the intercept. So it started out at that value. So it's increasing by about this much per year at a starting point of this, because this is what it started at down here. That's what the model says. You'd be like, well, it didn't start at that. It started at this. Well, the model, <laughs> the line is the model. Everything on this, everything on this is a what? I want to see in the chat. You guys got to help me out. We got to review while we do this. Everything on this line is a what? It's a prediction, so it's a what? Everything on is a, this is a prediction, which is a Y. Close, not a Y. These are Ys. Good, good guess right there, Jared. 20 points, Jared. Why, yes. <laughs> you just like, my hand accidentally hit enter right there. I hit enter by accident. These are, these are the Y hats. These are the Ys. And then the distance each one away is the residual. Can everyone see that in their mind? That you have right here the Ys. And you know what? If we can see it in our minds, we can also draw it. So we should understand right here that these d d d there's the pen pen's black so it's hard to see on a black desk so we have right here that these are the y's these are the y hats and then the distances they are away from each other are the residuals e just in notation we got actual points predicted points and so yeah and then this is the that's not a point right there that's just a spot on the line so that's the Y right there. So the line makes predictions. Oh my gosh, somebody yell at me. Wow. Uh, sorry about that. That's an error. Um, the line makes predictions and the point is the actual. So you can see the black dot right there is the actual. The distance it is away from its prediction, which its prediction is made from the line is y hat, which is the equation. When you think about your equation, the equation of the line is y hat equals b0 for the intercept plus b1x. And sometimes I put the one here because other classes we do. Great job with the res res residual wrap. If you haven't gotten all your 20 points today, that's another 20 for you right there. Keep it up. We still get points during office hours, which it's not office hours yet, but it's review of assignments. So we have here, what does the model predict for the interest rate in the year 2000? Well, with this, we actually need to write the equation. So when you write your equation, I'm going to kind of show it here, but we're going to, ah, it's 20, 45 and 25. Okay. Okay. So the predicted value 
is going to be 0 0.45 uh, plus 25. And then I think that's 30 years. I think that's it. Let me double check. I'm going to carry the decimals here. No, the year 2000 is 50 years. I don't know math. Why am I putting 50 years right here? Because the graph started at 1950. And so there we go right there. So we're going to plug in 50 here for the years since 1950. Now, don't be very careful. I don't know if they'd accept that answer. Um, let's see if they would. This is a test to see if they'll accept that answer. Um, we're going to take the slope times it by 50 and then add that to this right here. So does it want us to round it? Round to the nearest integer, 13. So I think it will accept it. It did. Um, now, what I would actually do if I was solving this problem, I hope they don't give conflicting answers. I would take the slope with all the decimals. Please tell me if you're off by like, once again, if you get the question wrong, tell me if it's because of this. And then I would add to it the intercept. And that still rounds to 13. So it looks like they let you use either way. So we made our lives easier by using these abbreviated versions. So using those abbreviated versions, which I would not do. And once again, the biggest thing is you don't here. Let me just, I have to say this. The reason it doesn't make that big of a deal to me is because when I make a linear model, so if I make a model, when I'm actually making models, I don't have to solve predictions by hand. I can go here and type in new data and I could do that somebody's like a data frame of people's weights. So here's people's weights. Okay, so these are just, uh, don't know what I hit, uh, go away. These are people's weights right here. And then I say predict using my model on new data equals new data. And I run it and it makes predictions. So I just want to point out that when I do statistics, I know how to solve these by hand, but I don't have to solve these by hand. Does that make sense to everybody? Why, while I'm like, it's kind of a moot point for me because I don't solve these by hand. I just put these in right here and then they're solving it for me when I run this code right here. It just, it solves it like that. I don't solve things by hand really a lot. So um, that's one of the great things about statistics is you don't have to be amazing at mathematics. It does the work for you. It solves the equation rather than me. Yeah, it's so nice. It's so easy. It's just like, it puts in the number for me. It just puts that number in, carries all the decimals, does it perfectly, and I'm done. I got it. <laughs> so um, that's why I don't, you know, math errors. Blech. Would you expect this prediction to be accurate? This is a key term we should know. I want everyone to notice that this, this prediction of 50 right here is doing what? This prediction for 50 is what? This prediction of 50 is a what for this model? We should know it immediately. Prediction of 50 is a what? You guys got it. You know what's going on. It's an extrapolation of the model. The model stops there. That's an extrapolation. You do not know what the model might actually do. We don't know what the model will do. I'm not saying it's going to do that rainbow thing. It's just that we don't know what the model will do. We're extrapolating beyond the model. So extrapolation is when you go outside the x-axis. So once again, we always want to kind of know the answer before we look because it makes it very easy to see that that's extrapolation. It was the only one that said extrapolation. So I was like, it's extrapolation. You don't, it's not going to be a good, reasonable response right here. It's not going to be, we don't have confidence in the model's ability to predict that far out because it's an extrapolation. That's how I would say it statistically. Like the model doesn't have data anchoring it down. So I would, I would say we're not, that's not a good prediction. We've got right here the gestation period of uh, people. That's how long they're pregnant for. So you can see humans are pregnant for about uh, nine months, which equates to, I guess, about 270 or 280 days. Yeah, 270 ish. And so we have right here um, the life expectancy. And humans have a life expectancy about 82. So you'll notice here that there is a pattern that the longer life expectancy, the longer it takes to have a baby. I wonder what, I wonder what that is. Could you imagine that is that is pregnant for like that's like one and three quarter year almost one and two thirds years like what'd you do for the last two years well i was pregnant for most of them that'd be wow it's pretty crazy right there or imagine this down here imagine this way too long <laughs> an elephant maybe yeah something like that and so i like it right there and then down here what do we see now this thing right here 
Well, elephants, I think, live longer than this. So I think elephants. So I mean, I kind of thought, yeah. And I was like, I think they have a longer lifespan. I'll have to, I'll have to ask Chelsea. So she's like, I don't know. I don't do. She's like, I don't do theory, theory. So that'd be theory already. <laughs> it's like, I talked to her a lot over here. Oh, that sounds crazy. Sounds like a Black Mirror episode. Ah! Um, this down here, I don't know what this is, but this thing, whatever it is, is uh, has a very low life expectancy and its gestation period is very short. So for these data, the R, which is correlation, is equal to this. That's a moderate. It's not very, yeah, okay, it's not very strong. It's moderate. Do you think the association would be stronger if humans were removed? Okay, so here's what you want to do. What can an outlier do to a um, what can an outlier do to correlation? What can an outlier do to regression? What can an outlier do to correlation or regression? An outlier can do something. Not just something, it can do anything. You got it right there, Laura gets the 20 points right there. So does Kate and Zulan and Sam and Hannah and Whitley for following along right here. An outlier can do anything. This is this is review of chapter eight. If you wanted more review, review of chapter eight is happening right now. Outliers can do anything. So let's draw right here our data with an outlier and our data without an outlier. So the data with the outlier has a what are correlation. Remember, if it looks more like a zero or more like a one, so you're right, Jack, and go hold it off. So with that outlier, it's weaker with it. So if you remove it, it'll be stronger. So if you were to remove that outlier, it would make it stronger. So removing the outlier Let's see here. Do you think it would be stronger if humans were removed? I think there's another answer. Yeah, that's that's just a weird answer. And that's not why it's stronger. It's because it's more that the correlation would increase. The slope increasing is kind of like incidental. You could see yeah, this is where I always want to talk to my Pearson. You could make a correlation stronger, but have a lower slope. That's why correlation and slope are not the same thing. It's just to show it, I'm going to make a correlation stronger right here, but make the slope weaker. So you would have to do. So to make a correlation stronger, make the slope weaker. So yeah, okay, got it. Oh, is there not one? Okay. So this point right here would make the slope stronger. Does this make sense right here? This would make the slope go higher. Like if you fit a line through this data, I wish I could draw on it right now. The line would go like this. And if you remove it, the line would be lower. Does everyone see if I put a point here, this would make a, a line go higher through the data. So it would have a bigger slope, but the correlation has now decreased. And if I remove that point, the correlation is stronger. So you could make a stronger slope, but then if you remove that point, it's going to be weaker. So that just an example of a weaker, of a stronger correlation. But when you add a point, the correlation gets weaker, but the slope goes up. So correlation is the the strength of the correlation is the tightness of the points. Um, oh, I didn't do the review quizzes, did I? Um, Gracie, let me fix that. Email me, Gracie. Let me fix that. Sorry, sorry. A lot of moving parts and very quick days. No, Gracie, Gracie, get 100 points. Um, Gracie, I'll try to work on that immediately after class. That's not worth any points. It's just practice. Um, thank you, Gracie, for mentioning that. I always appreciate you guys saying things like that because... I'm sorry that that's not working for you right now. I just didn't change the dates on that because I was using that only as like a practice thing. I think it's good practice. Make sure to watch the cahoots and to do all the assignments. But it's 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 not worth a grade. Not worth a grade. I probably need to change the title of it to not worth a grade review. So um, just make sure. Um, go to gradebook, then click review. That worked for me. Okay, good. Maybe try that way too, but I'll, I'll try to fix these things up. Um, thank you so much for asking about those. You had trouble with it first too. Kyle, 100 points Kyle right there. Thank you, Kyle, for uh, helping for a solution on that too. I appreciate it. Um, I just didn't count it as a grade, so I didn't set it up because I forgot. <laughs> I didn't forget. I mean, I did, but yes and no. Okay. Let's go to the question. <laughs> um, is there a reasonable justification for removing humans? Sure. It, and this is this is a great review also. Kyle, you're awesome. Um, we have right here, yes, because we can talk about just non-humans. Because humans, I mean, we're, we're animals by like, we're in the animal kingdom by like definition, but you can be like, let's just restrict it to animals that are not humans. Cool. Okay. Now it's understanding animals that are not humans. I'm um, going to have to run off the screen for a second here. Ah! So we have that the, um, this right here, this one right here is the what? 
Does anyone know what this is? Because this has the name of the x variable right here. So if that's the x variable, it sounds like this is telling us that this is something and this is something. You're right, this is b0, that's the intercept. That is the intercept, this is the slope. So that's b0 and that's b1. It looks a lot like jump output when you show it in jump. Um, a lot of output will show you the intercept and the slope and they change names. So that's why I'm kind of okay with my person not always writing the same thing. Um, so if you notice right here, here's the intercept. I love R because it just calls it the intercept. And here's the coefficient. So this output you see right here where it has the estimate of the intercept, the estimate of the slope, this is B0, this is B1. This does look a lot like jump output. Um, jump output looks very, very similar. Why not? Let's show it. Pretty easy to get a regression in jump. So we're going to go here to the haircut data. We're just going to run a quick regression on this. Uh, let's increase font size. Cool. And then we go to analyze, fit Y by X. We put in quantitative, quantitative. We go here. We fit a line to it, and now we have it. So if you look down here at the very bottom of the screen, you'll see we have the estimate of the intercept and the estimate of the slope. So once again, that's what this question is showing us, is they're showing us, there they are. So those estimates right here are the estimates of the intercept. Here's the intercept, and here's the slope. Good talk on that. Here's a screenshot of the scatterplot and the regression. The association is, is it perfect? When would an association be perfect? When is an association perfect? When is an association perfect? Only when every point is directly on the line. It's not perfect, not weak, moderately strong. So it's not perfect. It would have to, everything would have to be on the line, straight line. You got it. We talked about that a lot. Great job, Alyssa, right there. 20 points. Interpret the slope. Well, one, we know what the value is. So the slope is this. Can't grab it. Okay. So it's got to be this value. I cheated on two decimals. Why would you give me more decimals? Don't do that. And then gestation period increases. So I'm going to do it myself right here. I'm not going to use their thing. So for each one year increase in life expectancy, we expect the gestation period to of an animal to increase by 13.03 days. I'm not using their interpretation. I'm using mine, practicing saying it so I understand what I need to say or be able to look for. So for each a uh, year increase in the life expectancy of an animal, we expect its gestation period to increase. Does that say will? Ah, oh, that should say expect. I'm mad at them. Um, yeah. <laughs> if I were, I'd like rewrite every my Pearson question. <laughs> a certain mammal has a life expectancy of 16. So what are we going to times 16 by? What are we going to times 16 by? And then add it to something. Because we basically have the equation over here. We're going to times divide the coefficient of slope. Nice job right there, Hannah. 20 points, Hannah and Whitley right there commenting. I like it. Throwing out some Frenzy Friday points. We had a Frenzy Friday today. 20 times 13.0293 plus 91 point. Ah! Oh, really? Why you do that? 13.0293 times 16 plus 91.3914. And that's got it right there. Boom. Do not round to the final answer. Round to one decimal. Got him. Awesome stuff right there. Similar question. We did it. Can you work them to with rewriting? <laughs> Can I work from up here since rewriting their questions? That'd be great. That'd be fun. I'm trying to do stuff with jump. Jumps, jumps wanted to do stuff, and I, I'll obviously talk to you too before I do that. But, um, but that'd be really fun if I could work with Jump and make more videos for them because I'm probably gonna be making more videos for R, and R is open source, so they probably. I mean, I don't. I'm not. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. It'd be really cool to like be hired on with Jump and be like, oh, I consult for Jump also and like help them make videos. How about that randomness though? How about that? Let's do it. Let's do it. Randomness homework time. We gotta have some music. I gotta hear the music too. Oh, let's do this. Here we go. <laughs> I should do Excel in these. I should, I should, I could make some Excel videos. 
I'm going to have a whole month off when I get to Texas. Um, so once I get to Texas, I'm going to start gearing up for the semester. I'm going to start making the studio in Texas. And uh, Black Magic, which uh, makes the, we use a thing that sends the video. And so Black Magic has uh, some equipment. And I left a message for them and I was like, oh, I can't get a hold of them. Left it like a week ago. And then I got an email two days ago being like, Hey, Brian, this is so and so from Black Magic. I've actually been to UT. It's a great campus. And I have family there. Um, they were really excited. And I wrote them this really nice email. Hopefully it wasn't too long. And I hope they, they know it was personalized. Like I wrote it from scratch. I hopefully they were like, this seems like a form email. But I told them our goals. Yeah, you, Tracy, if you want videos on stuff, email me and I'll make like one minute videos or stuff. I want what students want to see because I want the channel to grow. And so far we've made about 36, 37 videos. I mean, 37, 36, 37 dollars. But during the semester, we'll make more money. And once again, Tracy knows we've talked with Slot and we've talked about this class is that we're going to use the money for like either pizza parties, scholarships, or tutoring. So depending on how much we make, I mean, if we made like ten thousand dollars, we do them like scholarships and tutoring. So that's our goal. And so, and the, you won't see ads on these. Um, yeah. So Alyssa, uh, ask for videos, and then I'll put ads on those short videos. Um, but then any la class lecture videos, you, you're not going to see ads on these. Like if it's a lecture video, these don't have ads. And then that means YouTube won't be like promoting them. So they're less, I mean, you can still find them, but yeah. Okay, it's time for some randomness homework right here. Okay, you guys ready? Let's do this randomness homework. Flipping a fair coin. Oh, I've gotten this one wrong. Tracy, I'm gonna need your help on this one. Flipping a fair coin is said to be randomly generated heads and tails with equal probability. Explain what random means in context. So this is a really good note. I didn't say this during lecture. I mean, it's just that random means that it's at the start of it. I'm trying to think if there's a test question that says this. Randomness means we don't know what will happen, but we can actually predict for a long run. Like think about this. We don't know for certain what will happen when a free throw just shoots one free throw. And they're each independent of each other, you're right. And I think I, cause I got this wrong when I did in class this semester. Sometimes we'll get one wrong by accident. Just like the way they word it. In the long run, a fair coin will generate now here's the but here's the question. Remember, I asked this in class. You could review the video. They're not talking about the long run infinite, are they? Because that's always my question here. Are you talking about an infinite long run, which is theoretical? So if it's infinite long run, it'll generate exactly. But they're not talking about infinite. They're talking about um, kind of approximately like a long run, like a thousand coin flips or ten thousand coin flips. So in the long run, a fair coin will generate approximately this. And this says, yeah, this, this is great. This is saying that they are dependent. Like if you flip tails, you know, you'll flip heads. No, that's wrong. Each coin flip does not depend on the next, like coin flips do not depend on each other. They're independent. Take this note. If you want right now, there's a note for the future for the next test coming up soon next week. Um, it is a, I think so too. Um, great job, Jack, 20 points, Jack right there. Independent means if you know, a, it gives you no information on B. Like if you know if someone watched the Kahoot, which we did earlier, that would give you no information on them passing to say they're independent. To say two things are independent means if you know A, like the coin flip that just happened, you don't know the information about B. It's A, I trust you guys. It always gets me because um, if you did infinite coin trials, it would it, a fair coin would be 50-50. But infinite is a concept, not a real number. So you can't say like a long run, an infinite run. It's 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 theoretical, not actually possible. So they're talking, and that's what gets me. It's because sometimes we talk about the long run being as it approaches infinity. So as you approach infinity, you would get to that. Yeah, exactly. Nice job, Tracy, right there with the notes in the chat. Oh, uh, this one's very interesting. It's a fun topic. It's a study finds that 50, 300 babies in the world are born with birth. 300 babies are born and 15 are expected to have birth defects. So when we look at this with random numbers, which is something you can generate uh, you can do simulations with. I want you to think about this. If we were to use random numbers here, why would we not just use one through 100? Why would we use things like zero through 99? This is a confusing part for people of this question. Like, why would you use zero through nine, zero, zero through 99? It's because how many numbers, this is the hardest frenzy credit you've ever gotten. First person who knows this gets a hundred points. You gotta type in the chat, how many numbers Ah, uh, kind of. How many numbers are between 1 and 100? How many numbers are between 1 and 100? I, 
They have to explain it. William, you're right. William, it's 100. So I, but the, now it's confusing. Now it's confusing because I've confused some people here. You're thinking the range, maybe. The range here is 99, but imagine 100 people are in a room and you give them all a number. Does that make sense? If there's 100 people in a room and you give them all a number, you'd have person number one through person number 100. So how many numbers are there? Does that make sense? Kind of whole numbers. Joseph's right, right there. Yeah, exactly. And and so don't worry. That's why I say these things. I know it's like um, range is 99. So you'd say the range of numbers is 99, but there's a total of 100 numbers. Does that make sense? I know it's so confusing. That's why I like pull these things out and mention them because I ask these questions like every semester and I'm ready for the wrong answer. So don't worry if you got it wrong. That's why I ask the big questions right here. I throw some big points. It sounds so simple, but the difference between the range is this. Yep. Same between. Yep. And so I want you to think about this. All I'm going to do is take all these numbers. And now the first person who walks in the room is going to get this number. And the last person who walks in the room is going to get this number. And I've just taken it and shifted it to the left one. How many numbers are there in here? How many numbers are there in here? How many numbers are there? There is still 100. It's almost as though I've taken the 100 and put it at the start. Does that make sense? It's almost as though the 100 is over here at the start as 0, 0. So it's almost as though that 100 is the first number and then we go up to 99, which is now the last number. Does that kind of make sense? So why are you, you stats people, stop this. Why are you doing this? Well, you, you imagine, imagine this. I hand you a number, and on that number, it says you are number 00. zero. This is the instruction manual for the GoXLR, <laughs> which I had to write something on, so I talked at the bottom. So I hand you a number, and I'd say your number in this race is 00. zero. Does that make sense? It's like we're numbering things. This is number 00. zero. You on your on your ticket in the race, it says zero zero. Your racer zero zero. That's your identification, your ID, it's your identifier. So, does this make more sense right here? Yeah, it's it's like it's it's just like a, a you're, it's like a category. You're right. You get it. It's not how many there are. There's not zero zero. It's just that this is a thing we can simulate. So um, I can show this being simulated in R. Um, I can go here and I just can create a vector of numbers. And I can go 0 to 99. And now the numbers right here are these. And if you notice, you can see, you should see up here at the top, there are, of course, 100 numbers here. And we can confirm also by calling this numbers 2. And we can confirm this here, that from 1 to 100 is also this. So it's just a shift in where the numbers start to just visually view these things. I think this is why code can help, because here's all the numbers 0 through 100. And you would just call this zero, zero, technically speaking. So does that make sense right here? And these would be like zero, one, zero, two, zero, three. Yep. And that's technically how you would write it. Good question right there, William. Another 20 points to William right here. And then we'll do quiz after this, Josh, you got it. So this right here is how you would simulate those numbers. And think of this. If 15 out of 300 babies have birth defects, then what babies, what percent of babies have birth defects? Fun topic. If 15 out of 300 babies have birth defects, then what um, what percent? 5%. Now, here's where people make a mistake on this question. The answer here is not 5. The answer here... Oh, wait. It's this one. Yes, good. The answer here is not 5. The answer here is not 05. The answer here is 04. Why is it 04? Because start counting at 00. 00, 01, 02, 03, 04. Because of the 00, you got it. If you start counting at 00, that's just count. 00, 01, 02, 03, 04. There's five numbers right there. 00, 01, 02, 03, 04. There's your five numbers out of 100 numbers. It's we've shifted everything down a little bit. That means this one would start at 0, 05 and go all the way through 99. And once you know the trick on that one, that one's pretty easy. Does that make more sense for those working that problem right there? Hopefully that makes a lot more sense and you understand, okay, that's how that one is done. And now we're on to the hardest problem on this one. Yay, the hardest problem. Woohoo, hardest problem. 
Okay, let's do this. And I do have some videos for these. I'll send out reminders for these videos. I've got some really good videos where I do some of the other hardest problems. So, um, so Neeland, if you're stuck on the quiz questions, which these ones are due Sunday, if I do remember, because we're going to do the... So if you're stuck on the quizzes, um, I have some videos like the couple pairing problem and I think the grocery store problem. So I've got videos doing those and they're like 15 minute videos where I work through the problem. So I do have videos going over the tough ones on the quiz because these are some of the toughest ones. Like the, the randomness, it's probably my favorite. And I'm gonna show you how to solve this one. You ready? Here's a tough problem. Okay, we're gonna play a game of sorry. And when we play a game of sorry, we have to move 10 spaces at the end of the game. Uh, you'll see them, they'll, they'll be called like couple pairing problem and grocery store problem. It's like grocery store simulation and couple pairing, and you'll see them uploaded at the same time. So once you see like couple pairing problem and grocery store simulation, you'll see them. If you go to the list of videos, they're uploaded at very the same time. And I'll send out links to them later on. If you can't find them or email me a reminder, and be like, Brian, send us those links for the help. So that way we can, cause they're really good videos. I go through it very thoroughly. So that'll be a good utilization of our time. Ah, whoop. Awesome. Thank you, Neeland. Keep up the great work. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine makes 10 spaces. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Okay. Has anyone ever played a game of sorry? Has anyone ever played the game of sorry before? Sorry. Sorry. In Canadian. <laughs> I just like to do accents for fun. I don't want anyone to think. A horrible Canadian accent. Well, it's like being fun Canadian. It's like, no, I just like soy. <laughs> a boot. It's like, accents are fun. Um, So we have right here. <laughs> <I know. laughs> My dad's Canadian, so, but he left there when he was like two. I'm New York. I left there when I was like four. So um, my mom's New York. Yeah, my mom and dad are both, they're both more New York. My, my dad's from Rochester and my mom's from the Bronx. So they have more of an accent than I do, but they've been in the South for such a long time. So they'll say y'all and stuff like that. Nothing wrong with y'all. So uh, I'll say y'all sometimes. So um, they are like, I don't mind North, South. I don't care. We're, we're all, we're all American, even Canadians. <laughs> I'm going to calm down. Too much fun. Both your parents are Canadian. That's awesome. My dad's Canadian. I'm first generation American on this side. So, and on my mom's side, second gen. So uh, there we go. A little history of Brian right there. All that good stuff. Let's do this. Okay. <laughs> We've got here the, uh, you're right here to start. <laughs> how about, how boot Canada? Um, we got to move 10 spaces. We got to move 10 spaces. And as we move 10 spaces, we can win the game. Okay. You ready? What are the numbers we can roll on a dice? I need some numbers of a dice for the Frenzy Friday points right here. What are the numbers we can roll on the dice? Any ideas of the number on a dice? Any idea of those numbers on a dice? One through six. Jared got some Frenzy Friday points. Nice job, Jared. So we can roll numbers one through six. Very important right there. And there can be like six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve sided dice. This is going to be a six sided dice. So, um, oh, that's so cool, Tracy. And so here we are. We got a six sided dice right here we're going to roll. And so what happens if we roll six? One, two, there we go. That's three, four, five, six. We are now four spaces away from getting home. We have to roll one. That's another roll. We have to roll one, two, three, four. Good. So everyone see we have to roll four spaces. Now in the game of sorry, this is a very important rule. If I roll a five, what happens? Do I win if I roll a five? Do I win? This is a very important in rule for this simulation. You don't move William 20 points right there. William is totally right in a list of 20 points for answering. So we got this right here. Keep answering, but you should know you don't use the roll. You don't use the roll. You're, you're stopped. If I roll a two now with my second roll, so here's my second roll. This was a six, the first roll. And if I roll a two, I go to right here. So now I could roll a what to win. I could roll a two and win, or I could roll a one and move forward one space. So most importantly, if I do roll a one, now I have to roll a what to win. I have to roll a this to win. I have to roll this to win. Have to roll a one. Does that make sense? If I roll a six, I don't move. If I roll a five, I don't move. Four, I don't move. Three, I don't move. Two, I don't move. One, I win the game. So does everyone see how this is played? You're trying to add up to 10, but you can't go over. The abbreviation of this is 
You're trying to add up to 10, but you can't go over. You're trying to add up to 10, but you can't go over. Kind of like the price is right. Good simulation right there. Another simulation. You know what I might do, Tracy? I might make an R code for this. Here's one thing I hate about this question. When you copy the numbers, this is how you have to do it. Please watch, and you'll probably have to pause the video here to see exactly what I'm doing. I'm starting here at this period. That way I can see I highlight the period. I go all the way down here to the O. Highlight just these things right here, and you have the numbers highlighted. I don't think they expected you to do this. And numbers that are randomly generated in my Pearson, you oftentimes can't copy because there's like a code going on in the background, but you can copy if you copy through them. Now, when you copy this, for most people, when you copy the numbers, the following will happen. They'll double copy. Now, it's very hard to see where they've double copied. Now, to identify where they've double copied, first, we're going to delete off this excess stuff. We're going to delete that's not a number, and also the period's not a number. Why am I deleting these? These are not numbers. Now, you actually have two lines. It looks like three lines, but there's two lines. This right here is the duplication of the first line. This right here, which is maybe a little bit easier to identify. Ah, it's going to be hard to find my notes. Here we go. This right here, if you look at what I have right there, good. This is the duplication of the second line. Uh, Neil, does it make sense? It, um, no, so so you mm -hmm. so watch again as I do this right here. You ready? To copy the numbers, you have to select before it right here at the dot, and you have to go to the O. Is that working for you, Jared? Right there, you have to start at the you have to start at the dot, and you have to go through to the O. You can't highlight the numbers. I don't think they expected us to do this, but we're doing it the easiest way possible, and we're making sure we get it right. So you got it. Awesome. So now you use Control C or Command C, you copy it, you paste it in, you delete the dot, you delete the O, and you got it, good job. So tricky, right? So if you're watching the video right now, that it's a tricky thing, it's, yep, you got it. And now what are we gonna do? Hit Control F or Command F, Control F or Command F. We're gonna use the find right here and type in 374053. Now what am I doing? Oh wait, it's a three. What am I doing? This right here is when this line, so usually you do it from the back way. If you do it from backwards, it won't highlight forwards. This right here is where that line starts to what? This right here is where that line starts to what? This right here is where that line starts to what? That is where that line starts to, do you see it? It's where it's duplicating. That's the first line duplicating right there. Repeat, nice job, Zulan. 20 points right there, and also Neelan. We're going to delete those because they're duplicates. We don't want the duplicates. It did that for us. We're like, no, don't do that. Now I'm going to start typing in 54930. And look, this is where this line starts duplicating. Why am I doing this? It's just because when it copied it, it duplicated. I don't know why it just does that. So I deleted off both duplicates. So that's, that's one of the trickiest parts. And now I'm connecting the lines. So now that we have this, I'm going to increase font size. And we're almost there. We're almost to where we can work the problem. You can write this all out by hand, but doing it this way ensures you get it correct. On a Mac, I believe the find and replace, when you hit Command F, there should be the replace option. Sorry, Mac, I can't show you how to do it right now like by doing it and showing you it. But when you hit Command F, I think it has the replace thing on there too. You want to use find and replace. On a PC, it's under review. Or is it not? I used to do it on a Mac. Command F. Is it under the drop down? Nope. Where is it on the PC again? Where is that? Find and replace on a PC. Ah, I thought it was under review. Who can tell me where it's at? I have forgotten the PC way. No, no longer. Don't know that way. Oh, is it here? There it is. Found it. I thought it was under review. Okay, so you have to go to that down arrow right here and go to replace. It's in a very similar spot, but we're going to have all this highlighted right here. I don't think you need... Ooh, 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 we don't want that. Don't do that. Don't highlight it. Don't highlight the text. Go to replace. So right here, we're going to find... We don't want to find the whole thing. We're going to find zero, and we're going to replace zero with what? What do you think we're going to replace zero with? 
Any idea what we're going to replace zero with? Zero is not on a dice. So what should we replace zero with? What should we replace zero with? Any ideas what we should replace zero with? The answer is zero is not on a dice. So just replace it with nothing. So if you notice, it deleted off all the zeros. What, any other numbers we should delete that are not on dice? Like what else is not on a dice that's in here right now? Empty, you're right, nothing. How about seven? Seven's not on our dice, remove that. Stop moving down. <laughs> How about, you're gonna do it, you're gonna move down, aren't you? Oh, you didn't, I fixed it. And then we got nine, replace all. If you notice, make sure I'm not good. Um, if you notice right here, We've deleted all the numbers that are not on a dice. You can delete them by just deleting them. But if you use find and replace, you're less likely to make an error. Does that make sense? Using find and replace, and it's why I use it, you're less likely to make an error in how you remove the numbers. It's much easier to use find and replace, replace seven, eight, nine, and zero with nothing. And now we have dice rolls. Now we get to play the game. You ready? Let's do it very slowly to start. So now, how um, are you on a Mac or a PC? Mac or PC, Hannah? It sounds like you might be on a Mac. A Mac. Okay, Hannah, you're going to help out all the Mac people right here. You ready? 20 points to Hannah. I want you to hit Command F, and you're going to have to tell us what you're seeing on the screen. I think when you hit Command F, you should see a find thing appear in the top window of your screen. So I think, if I remember, it's going to appear up here, and you should have like a find box. It Did that appear when you hit Command F? Did like a little find window appear in the top part of your screen? Did a find thing. It appears in the top right corner. And now you want to click. Is the down arrow on the right or the left side? There should be like a down arrow on it. Like, uh, is it on the right or the left side? I think it's on the left, but I'm, for some reason, uh, my brain's like conflicting. You hit Command F, then you hit the three dots on it. So is it the three dots? It's on the left. So then there's three dots right here. So then you hit the three dots right here. And then it's got like find and replace. Does that look pretty accurate to what you guys are doing to find the find and replace? And then it'll come up with the find and replace menu. Command shift H is find and What? Is it control shift H? Right? Oh, it didn't do it for me. That's not on it. Oh no. Oh no. What happened? I don't know what that did. I did not do a find and replace on a Mac. It's not that on a PC. You should be like, what is it? What do people tell people to do? Uh, Like... What do people tell people to do? Uh, Alt F4? I think Alt F4. If you told me that, I would not. <laughs> You're like, Alt F4 is uh, is fine to replace on a PC. I would not fall for that. Watch me be so into teaching. Like, it's Alt F4, bro. <laughs> is it, it's Alt F4, right? That's the meme. Okay. So now that we got the numbers erased, you guys ready to do this? Here we go. Um, we've got here that we're rolling our dice. I want you guys to imagine this. You know what we're using? We're using our imagination. All simulations, I should have remembered all lectures why I made this one for imagination. We're going to roll the dice here. He's going to roll the dice. Be very careful. This is strict imagination time. What did you roll in your imagination? Now, uh, be careful. There's something you did roll in your imagination. You rolled that dice, and what did you roll? Three. You're right, Jared. You rolled a three. That's what happened. <laughs> you could have rolled a five, but you rolled a three. So now you roll the dice again, and what'd you roll now? You roll the dice again, and what'd you roll? You rolled a what on your next roll? A four. So what are you at right now? What, how many spaces have you moved? How many spaces have you moved when you rolled a four? Total, you've moved how many spaces? Seven. You've rolled three, and then four, you've moved seven. So now, this is what I say over, because seven plus five is 12, but seven plus three is 10. That was the first simulation. On the next simulation, we rolled a two, then we're at five, then six, then 10. On the next simulation, we roll four, then seven, but be careful, this is over. You don't count it, but you still keep it in there. And then we rolled eight. We're at eight because we have it. This is over. This is nine. And once we get to nine and only at nine, that took a long time to get a one. Two, four, seven, ten. Four, ten, five, over, over, seven. Oh, no, no, no. Eight, 
10. 5, 10, 10, 9, 10, 9, 10. Delete the last number. Check for all the stuff right here. Do we have 5 and 5? That's 5. That's 5. So now that we've done the simulation right here, we click to the bottom. We click to the words. It might be hard for you to see, but this says 55. The answer is 55. So it took 55 rolls out of 10 simulations. On average, this took 5.5 rolls. There we go. I know it gets a lot easier once you have the data sorted. So I spat up there at the end just to show you that it can be done a lot quicker when you know how to do it. Um, but up, 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 where'd you go? So close you, Taco. Go. <laughs> so you saw me go a little bit quickly there at the end. But <laughs> um, here, Jared, um, notice that this simulation was a bit ridiculous. This one trial, it should be called because we went in this trial four, seven, this was over, eight, this was over, this is nine, and then it took us this long to get to 10. You don't always need a one, but be careful. Does Jared, is it making sense? I know it went quick at the end. And then at the very end, once you have all your numbers, and I do wanna point something out, this is where people often make a mistake. Let me go to the very end here. Another mistake people make is on the last simulation, you can have extra numbers. They did this so you do, um, and do have a whole video going over this. I might go, tell me where you're confused. Tell me what you're stuck on. Um, there's a lot of steps to this simulation. It's one of the harder ones. So you, you skip the number exactly. So watch this last trial right here. I say four because I rolled a four. Then I say nine. And then this is over, over, and this is 10. Now the four is just a remainder. Um, so once I do this, do you understand up to here, Jared? Um, do you understand this where I have every um you understand this good got it sorry i went very very quickly at the end so now that i've done it and why did i delete the four because the four was just a remaining number we're not going to use uh the question said to perform 10 simulations the four is just an extra number the four gets deleted because it's just an extra number so now that i have all my numbers here there's a button in word that lets you count how many characters there are this is why I make sure you have all excess characters deleted so if you notice there's no excess characters there's, it's just literally all the numbers. Does that make sense? Like I just, there's no excess characters around this because I created it this way. So you can count this manually, but rather than counting it by hand, it's easier to see that there are 55 characters and it'll tell you the characters without spaces. Mine are the same because there's no spaces on mine, but if it does have a difference, use the one uh, with no spaces, which is the top one. It might be hard to see that, but that's the top one that says 55 characters with no spaces. If you see that this one has more, it's just because you've got a space you can't see in there somewhere. And, and spaces, you're not counting the spaces, you're counting the numbers. So there are 55 total dice rolls. How many simulations did we perform, Jared? How many simulations did we perform? We performed how many simulations here? How many simulations were performed in this? 10. So it took us on average, it took us on average 5.5. You got it. That's why we're doing this right here. So it took us on average. Now don't recount the characters. You got it. Alyssa, is it making a little more sense? This is the one of the trickiest problems on this homework. Now I'm going to give you guys a tip. Here's a tip. This question on the homework can never be missed if you know this. You get infinite trials on it. You can try this problem as many times as you want. So you can guess at it. As I would not suggest this. I would know how to do it. But you can technically, it was 5.6. I was so close. You can technically guess at this one. Now, I would not suggest just guessing it and getting it. And I do know a good way to guess it. I've got my tricks. But um, so you can guess it. So, and if you don't know how to guess at these ones, it might be a little harder to guess. But that took me... It took me about 15 minutes to explain how to do it. I can complete this problem. Speed run. Let me get speed run time over here. Speed run, but not on the speed run screen. How quickly can Brian do this problem? I bet I can do this problem in under two minutes. I think I can do this speed run. Oh, when I restart it, it'll, there we go. Okay, I can do this problem in under two minutes. You ready? Under two minutes. It's gonna be quick. On sub two, I can get. I'm almost certain of that. I dare say I can do it in like 90 seconds. Here you go. You ready? Let's do this as a speed run. Sub two. Sub two speed run is problem. 
First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna copy the numbers right here. We take the numbers, we copy them, we go right here, boom, we drop in a new word sheet, we put it in. We're gonna zoom in because Brian's blind. He's gonna delete this right here, got it. We can identify where the duplicates are at by going right here. There's the duplicate starting here. It's 577, there it is right here. Here's the duplicates identified right there. It's the quickest way to get your duplicates. Now we need to go to Control F. We need to go to the drop down menu right here. We need to go to replace. Once we get to replace, we're gonna replace nine with nothing, replace all. We're gonna place eight with nothing. We're gonna place all. We're gonna place seven with nothing, replace all. We're gonna place zero with nothing, replace all. Got them down, done, good. We're gonna make the font bigger because Brian's blind. So now we go here, we do our dice rolls. That's nine, 10, we got seven, that's 10. We go here, that's six, that's seven, that's 10. That's eight, that's nine, that's 10. That's 10, that's 10, that's 10, that's four, that's 10, that's seven, that's eight, that's 10, that's nine, that's 10. Got it, good. Delete, delete the space. Boom, that's 49, 49. Oh, sub one, I got it, come on. It's 4.9, I knew it right there. At the moment I saw 49, I knew it was 4.9. And I know I didn't enter it in, but at the moment I saw 49, that confirms. I can do 49 divided by 10 in my head. I think you guys know that you just move the decimal when you divide by 10. I know it doesn't count, does it? <sighs> Not doing it again. <laughs> so I just, I just want to show everyone that why I do those is just to show you if you know how to do these, they're easier. Now, I, I do have another video where I go over this problem. If you are stuck on this problem one, what did we learn? is that we can take, we can guess this problem and get it right to just get the points. The teacher telling you, guess and get it right and get the points. What's better? <laughs> I know, oh no, Alyssa, give it another shot. That means your simulation was a little bit wrong. Give it another shot. Remember the homework one. So give it another shot, Alyssa. Remember, you can guess it if you are stuck. So Alyssa, I want you to get it because you can guess it. I want, I want everyone to do this one. So even if you're off by point one, redo it or, or guess it. But know how to do it. Understand it. If you're if you're like, just just be like, I'm gonna get these points. You got it. So um, I appreciate you guys are working hard on these. So this one you have to be exact in your answer. And if you make one little error on the simulation, it's off. This one seems super tricky. This one seems so hard. I can speed run this one in under. I'm not looking. If I look, I'll be cheating. I'll be solving it as I'm looking at it. How fast do you guys think I can speed run this one? I'm not, I'm not, how fast do you guys think? I'm not looking because if I look, I'll see, I'll, I'll solve it while I'm, how fast do you guys think I can speed run this one? And I'll explain how I did it. Oh, it's easier than 45 seconds. <laughs> I think I can get this one in under, I think I can get this one under 10 seconds. Okay, you ready? If I look, I'll cheat. Okay. I think I can get in under 10. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I'm not looking. I'm just getting ready. <laughs> Okay, so we just have to count the zeros right here. One, is it zeros? Is it zeros? Oh, no, is it zeros? It is zeros, right? No, wait. Pick one as a lucky number. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, six. Okay, six out of 60 is 10. Boom, we're done. Uh, it was sub 15. Okay, good. Okay, so let me explain what this one's doing right here. I thought it was zero, and I was like, wait, that's wrong. Um, it says right here you're picking one as your lucky number. So does everyone see one is your lucky number? Does that make sense? So one is your lucky number. Does everyone see that? So now you're gonna do 60 trials right here. So you do 60 trials. With 60 trials, I was blocking the speedrun timer, sorry about that. So with 60 trials, you're asking what percent of the time do you get one? So one is your lucky number and you're just trying to see how often you win the lottery with a lucky number of one. And so right here, we see a one here. That's one one, two ones, three ones, four ones, five ones, six ones. You could confirm the answer right here, um, making it easier on your eyes. If, if you're worried about viewing it, you could go into here, paste it, and you could find one and you could count it this way. So this is maybe just an easier way of counting the numbers to confirm that there is uh, six occurrences. So if you do this right here, find the one, I said it, there we go. So this confirms again that there are six occurrences. Six out of 60 is 10%. I got lucky. The percent was really nice and neat. And yeah, so we got that one done in a sub 15. So knowing the trick to simulations is key and understanding how they work. You're just trying to see how often you get your lucky number, which they're saying means you win the lottery or something like that. 
Um, does who feels like they completely understand this problem? I know I did this one quickly, but do, does everyone completely understand this simulation right here? It's just simulating numbers zero through nine, and how often do you get your lucky number one? Which is what we would expect. We'd expect around ten percent, but according to the way the simulation is set up, that's a keynote right there. So I think um, maybe Tracy would tell you guys that that's kind of a keynote. The simulation is set up that you would get it about 10% of the time, but um, we actually observe that in our simulation. Why am I saying it's set up that way? Well, because there's nine numbers, so you would expect one to occur 10% of the time, and it actually did occur 10% of the time in the simulation. So a question could read, this is a very key note on simulation, but a question could read, um, with how the simulation was set up, what percent of the time would you expect to see one? And then what percent of the time would you did you see one in the simulation? So we did see one 10% of the time in the simulation, and we expected to see it 10% of the time the way the simulation was created. Good stuff right there. Uh, this one right here is not so bad also. I like this question a lot. Can I copy the numbers? Can I? Maybe. Oh, it kind of looks... Ooh. Okay, don't copy the numbers like that. Whatever you do, don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. Oh, it, it repeated them also. Huh, never copied this one before. Okay, so I think the way I like to solve this problem, if I can stop highlighting, that'd be nice. Um, Let's go right here and copy the numbers like this with screenshot. And I've got pens. Okay. Okay. So you're going to take a multiple choice test. In your multiple choice test, the numbers 0 through 7 represent getting the answer right and the numbers eight through nine getting represent getting the answer wrong. We want to know what percent of the time do you get all the answers correct? So that means every number we should see in the simulation of you taking a test question should be contained between what and what? Every number we see in the simulation could, should be contained between what and what, meaning you got it right. And you need to get all six of them right for us to say you got them all right. This one takes a little bit longer, and I'm not going to go as quick on it. Zero through seven, you got it. So we need to see when we simulate the numbers right here that you get numbers between zero and seven. So let's take a look. We'll put right here down at the bottom, zero through seven means right. So zero through seven is right. And eight through nine is wrong. Okay. So what do we have? We have right here that you got this one wrong and this one wrong. So did you get all of those right? Did you get everything right in those six questions? Yes or no? You got two wrong. These And I want you to notice this. Hopefully everyone knows this right now, that these are no longer numbers. It's nine does not represent you got nine right. Nine represents on that multiple choice question out of the six questions you took, you got one that question wrong. So there was two questions you got wrong and four questions you got right. So we can just put an X over this. We can identify the nine right here that you did not get everything right. Once again, we got a nine right here and you did not get everything right here. Wait a minute here. How about this fourth simu this fourth trial right here? In the fourth trial, did we get everything right? It is categorical, is it right or wrong? It's actually converting it to a categorical using numbers to represent yes or no's. In the fourth trial, did we get everything right? We did, because all those numbers are between zero and seven. Every question on the multiple choice was right. On this one, we got this one wrong and that's it. Here we got these wrong. Oh my gosh, what happened here? We studied and we got four out of six wrong. That's a horrible, that's horrible. And we're just marking where we got stuff right or wrong. We are not acing this. Oh, that one, I'm gonna come back to it when I change pens here. As long as we got one wrong, it means we didn't get them all right. So you can just identify one, eight, or nine in these. And unless I made some mistakes, it looks like only two out of 20 simulations. Is that, <clears throat> does anyone see anywhere I should correct my work? 100 points if I got something wrong. Please tell me if I made a mistake. Um, the only way I'm going to get this wrong is if I did the simulation incorrectly. Does anyone see any mistakes in the simulation I did right here in, in notating on it? Hopefully I didn't miss an eight or nine. I mean, I mark them hopefully. So I think we're good. This is two out of 20 with two out of 20. Two out of 20 is 
check the answer right here. 10% is right. We just got 100 on the homework. I'm going to be right back. Touch the microphone again. Wash my hands. Stay healthy during quarantine. So if you got 100, I want to hear I got 100 in the chat. Make me proud. I'll be right back here in about 20, 20 seconds. You know what I'm talking about. Wash those hands. 20 seconds. Be back. And I'll see you guys here in a moment. Be right, right back. Oh no, did no one make hundreds? Oh no. Did we want to do some chapter eight quizzes? What did people want now? Chapter eight quizzes? I think it was chapter eight quizzes. A hundred Neilan, that is awesome. Great job, Neilan, right there. So and yeah, you wanted the maybe I hopefully didn't keep you till afternoon and everything. Um random quiz sounds hard. Yeah. There and remember you get five tries at it. Um there's a bunch of help videos I have for it. I think people want yeah, chapter eight, chapter eight quiz. Let's do chapter eight quiz. Let's do it. Let's do it. I might even do a stream or two this weekend to help out with stuff. I might hop on for like an hour or so. We will see. I might try to make some more videos. So let's... Why am I closing all those? I don't know. Let's go over to here. We got this. Chapter 8 quiz. Replace questions. That's not that many. We got this. Cool. I gotta remember my music. I never remember that I got music. It's a new thing. Gotta get instrument. Would ran not on this exam. Randomness will be on the next exam. Could we do the cyclist question? Sure, let's do it. Let's do the cyclist question. Oh, we did the gestation one. And we did this one. Ah, we did it. We found it. Uh yeah, this one's a bit tricky. Um, this one right here I would suggest using jump for. <clears throat> so with jump, what we need to do. I would suggest jump for this one because you can get the graphic. And we're going to take and we're going to copy to clipboard. And we're going to take the data, copy it. There we go. We're going to bring it over to jump. And inside of jump, we're going to open up a new worksheet with file, new worksheet, new data table. We're going to go to edit, paste with column names. Now, I really want to pause here. This is a huge thing. Uh, sometimes it has column names, sometimes it doesn't. You'll know it has column names if you paste with column names and you see the column names at the top. If you don't paste with column names, it'll go in the it'll go into jump incorrectly. So if you notice on the right, this is when I pasted without column names and it put the column name in the first row. You don't want that. You want the column names to be pasted into here. So make sure you paste with column names. So this is when I pasted with column names, it worked properly. And then when I paste just normally, it doesn't put the column names at the top. So make sure you you paste correctly. If you do make a mistake, don't try to fix it. Simply start a new data table and paste with column names. I know the quick keys for those, but it's file new data table and paste with column names. Command shift -E. Um, You have to add shift to it. So we've got this right here. We've got the data pasted in. Make sure they're blue. And now we're going to go here to analyze and we're going to go to fit y by x. We're going to go here to year as the X and average speed with the Y. And we see this kind of wavy pattern. This one's a bit interesting because the linear model is going to have some issues with it. And if you notice, there's a gap right here. This was during World War I, I believe. And I think we also have this gap here during World War II. So there should be two gaps in the data, one for World War I and one for World War II. You notice these big gaps in the, the teens and the 40s. I guess that's when, no, the 20, yeah, the teens and the 40s. That's when the wars were. Um, we could fit the line now if we want. There's the line. Cool. Line eh, waves around it. That's interesting. Um, so let's go back. You have to zoom in on these plots a little bit here. This one's got the gaps. That's good. This one does not have gaps. This one does not have a gap in the teens. That one doesn't have gaps at all. So the, the one with the, it's kind of the trick to it. The one with the two gaps in the teens and the 40s um, is the right answer. It was this one right. Good. That's got the two gaps. That has to be the right answer. 
So that's the trick. So you don't actually have to use don't. I mean, still do it if you want. Um, describe the average relationship. Uh, it's positive. Well, they all say positive. Um, with a moderate amount of scatter. Well, that's all the same. Um, there's no, the no races. So right here, there's no races. Um, good. And then what does this one say? <clears throat> this one I'm worried about. So good thing we're doing this in the video. I, have, I do these questions every time, but then I always like, okay. So it has to be B or C. I would say there's generally a linear trend. You can see a line going through this. There's a non, they're not saying it's 100% linear. They're saying there's a general linear trend. I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with the general linear trend. Now to get these coefficients right here, you it is linear. We're going with that. It's gen. It's not. They're not saying it's perfectly linear. They're saying there's a general linear trend to it. Um, and I could dispute it with some higher level statistics on whether or not the answer to is it linear enough. The answer is where's my. Just jump. Not provide that anymore. Jump fifteen took that out. Really. Come on, you wouldn't do, why did they do that? They took out the fit test. Jump 15, no. I'll talk to them about that. Um, I can do it inside R if I really want. So, and I can see if the fit's good. Find the regression equation. The regression equation is found via jump. So that work you saw me do in jump would be found right here. And I think the regression solver might have, make sure if the regression solver doesn't work perfectly on this one, please tell me. It has a data input, but I hope I made the data input long enough. You might have to change the equation, or I might need to update to a 2.21 regression solver. But this can be done in jump pretty easily with the following numbers, which are down here also. Um, please tell me if something doesn't work properly. I will fix it. Maybe that was the issue with the question that we got wrong. Maybe that was it. I'll have to look. When something's weird, we check it. Maybe that's the issue. Maybe it's maybe it's me, it's not my person. That should be it. Let me look at my rounding again. Rounding's where I make all my errors. So that's negative two six six point three eight. That's positive point one five. Good stuff right there. Good stuff right there. Um, are the conditions for regression met? Okay. See, I'm going to go with this. What do you guys think? This is like a not one of my favorite questions. Questions that involve subjectivity on my Pearson, and that's why I'm glad we're doing this one too, are not the funnest things to do. See, it had us do it. That's the problem. It had us do it, and it's like... But I think they want us to notice that. They're trying to clue us in on this non-linear relationship. But it's... I mean, yeah, it's not linear. You can do a higher order polynomial on this. And you could go here to fit polynomial. I have to go up to here. Fit polynomial. And you could fit like a fourth degree polynomial to it. And if you notice, there is kind of a linear bend through it. And we can see the R squared increases up to from 88% to 91%. And even R squared adjusted is higher. So we've explained more. It seems legit. I think they want us to, Zulon, you get 20 points, but you get 100 points if you're right. Zulon, I think you're right. Is it seriously this? Oh, no, we got this one right. But I think they wanted, they want this, right? No? What did we get wrong? You got to be kidding me. So those are all right. The graphic is right. The coefficients are wrong. Round the year to three decimals. My Pearson. We had everything right. Everything was right. I was right that it was I'm leaning back. I'm relaxing. I was right on this. 
I know. Oh, it says round the constant. It's talking about this. It's calling this the constant. This says round the intercept to two decimals. Round the year. That's, that'd be points back instantaneously. That's ridiculous. Why would you do that, my Pearson? They should put this in red. They should be like, that's just mean. I'm sorry. Please email me on those things. We got everything right. We 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 beat their theory, but then they tricked us. I need a thing like my Pearson tricked us. Like I need a button here that like tricked again. <laughs> I'll make that this weekend. That's gonna be right next to the extra credit button when we get wrong something wrong with my Pearson. I mean, when it's legitimately, I count that as a trick. To me, that's getting tricked right there. Cause we had it. I my Pearson. You know what? Too bad, my Pearson. Guess what? You know what, my Pearson? You're not getting just three decimals. You're getting all the decimals. If I knew even more, I'd tell you more. And guess what? You're going to tell me I'm wrong, but that's right. Oh, it's all 80. Too bad. That's all the decimals, my Pearson. There you go. Take that, my Pearson. Is there another one on Chapter 8 you guys want to do? <laughs> if you frankly entered in all... They need to fix their problems to have a plus or minus margin of error. That when you enter in and just give it... <laughs> They need to make it so that when you enter in more decimals, that it tells you you're right because you were more accurate than it asked for. It should say enter in two decimals, but they're like, oh, you didn't follow instructions. Well, the instructions, I went beyond the instructions. Too bad. Too bad, my person. They're lazy. They're being lazy. I'm being, I should get over 100, my person. I'll go ahead and correct my grade. But yeah, we got all we tricked. We got their theory. We knew what they were asking for. They're saying general linear, and then they're saying there's a problem with. They they want you to notice here that there's a problem with the linearity at the start. There is this bend through the data, so they really want you to notice the gaps in the data, and the bend through the data. So that's what they're trying to point out with this problem, and it's saying that there's probably a problem with the linear condition. Oh, this one's pretty easy. This one we're gonna ace. You ready? We got this. So. What are these values of R? Every one of these values of R is telling us the what. See, we could use we could use R to figure this out. We could do R and confirm these answers. So let's actually do that. You ready? We're gonna use R and make the same exact plot they're showing us. And let's do it. You ready? So we've got core demo inside of R. And we're just gonna do the correlation by making a box right here. And a box should have a correlation close to what? A box should have a correlation very close to what? Should have a correlation close to zero. Now, for point A, do you think point A up here would make the correlation go up or down? Correlation is going to get very what if I put point here? Correlation is going to get a lot wetter. It's going to get a lot stronger. And that we kind of did what theirs has because theirs is 0.75 as the answer. It's going to go up. And so it probably should go about here. And if you notice, that's about 0.75, which when we confirm via the answer, that's where A is. So that's uh, 0.75. Now let's look at B. B is very close in the center of the box. B is right about here. Now this won't drastically change it, but it will make it go up. If you notice, it just barely went up right there. And I know that because it's not really a big outlier. It's towards the center of the relationship and it was zero to begin with. So once again, B is towards the center. It is a little bit higher. If it was a bit lower, it would make it go down. And I tried to get that as close to zero as I could. But this is making it just barely go up. So let's see right here. Uh, the one that's just barely above is this right here. That is B. Because, is it going to go in order? Nope, the order breaks next. Now point C is a confusing one. Point C, I think, would confuse a lot of people, and I understand why. Point C should be directly below the middle dot. And if I did this properly, it's going to need to go here. There we go. It's very hard to be directly below it. But because it's directly below it, it should not change it. If I could do this perfectly, it would not change it. There And there, now it's zero. So that's what they're going for with this one. It's directly below it. And interestingly enough, if you put this way up here directly above it, it would also basically not change it. Now, this one's a harder concept to understand. But I want you to think about the slope of the line. If the slope of the line is like this, and we point a point directly up here, and the slope is here, and this is kind of the balancing point. Like imagine a board on a balancing point. And then I put up, I pull up on it this way. The board's not going to tilt if I pull on the balancing point. Balancing point would be here. Sorry. 
it's not moving. So does that make sense? You're like lifting up the board. You're not you're not changing the slope. This would change the slope and make it positive. So you see the correlation's gone up right here. But this is over what we call it has no leverage. It's a concept we don't have about in this class. But due to the lack of leverage, it might make more sense. I could show it another way, but I think this communicates the concept and gives away the answer. But at this point right here for C would actually be this one. It's not going to change it at all. The next few are pretty easy when you get to E. E is way down here, which is going to make it more negative. You can't see it. There it is behind my head. E is going to make it a lot more negative. So E is going to be, uh, well, we skipped E because it's this one. And that puts D right here, which is slightly negative. D is going to be slightly negative right here at D. And there's D making it slightly negative. So if you move it further out, it makes it more negative. So what can outliers do to correlation, the slope? They can do anything because correlation is related to the slope. Like it tells us the sign of the slope. But um, that's why I like using things like, does who feels like R maybe helped you understand this a little bit better by actually seeing it? And I hope because now we can check our answers and we should be right. Yay, we got 100. But hopefully seeing R helps you kind of visualize what's going on. And that's why I kind of like that we've created those things that we can be like, hey, check this out. And that really wasn't coding. This was just utilizing the, you know, you can put points on this map right here. And Dr. Petrie coded this. So it makes sense. So I like that. I like that for that example. Same thing. This E is the most, nope, nope, nope. D is the most negative. Uh, this is the one that's slightly positive. That's B. A is the most positive. A is the most positive. C has no impact on it. And that leaves E is the most negative. As long as I didn't get confused, we got another 100. We did it. A variable that is not part of the model but affects the variable. Do not look at the answer. You should know this. This is your ice cream sales, sales and shark attacks. What is this called? What is this called right here? I'm going to show you guys a cool site. Lurking Elizabeth, 20 points. Um, this is another word for this. You will not be responsible for this. Um, but another word for this is spurious correlations. Um, so what you see on the screen right here right now are a bunch of other spurious correlations that could be... Uh, they might have a lurking variable in the background, but these two things right here... So I should d differentiate between a spurious correlation. Spurious correlations are kind of correlations that happen by random chance, like the Nicolas Cage and people dying in swimming pools. Then we've got people eating cheese and people dying in their bed sheets. Divorce rate and people eating butter. But you know what? Well, no, I did, they're, they're positively correlated. And that might confuse people when I say these are positively correlated. But I want you to look at the red line. Red line is divorce rate. But as divorce rate goes down, the consumption of butter is also doing what? So the, you might say, well, how are these negatively, uh, positively correlated? Because they're going down. How are they positively correlated? It's because lower divorce rate is associated or correlated with lower butter consumption. And you could also say higher divorce rates are associated with higher butter consumption. Maybe there's a lurking variable. Who knows? But the correlation here is 99.26%. The correlation R is equal to 99.26. We got age of Miss America. Oh my gosh. What is going on? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Total uh, computer science doctorates. Uh, total revenues generated by... Now, I almost think that this it's technology. So I'm wondering, is that really spurious? But a bunch of cool things right here. This is uh, Tyler... Tyler, what's his... Tyler Vegan. Something like that. Made a cool site right there. Um, there might be a lurking variable um, with those. Lurking variables are variables that are actually... The best example of a lurking variable is we use in the class is shark attacks and ice cream sales where the lurking variable is summer. It's a variable outside the model. Another key example was how long you live and how many TVs you own. The lurking variables right there might be access to healthcare or wealth of a country or personal wealth. Using a linear model to predict a value Y for an X variable from the ones used to find the model is called, wait, use, this is weird. Using a linear model to predict a value Y from an X value far from the ones used. So we're using out something outside the model, something outside the X space. What are we doing here? What are we doing right here? You should know this word pretty quick. If we're predicting from something outside the model, an X variable extrapolating, you guys know it. We don't look at the answers. We check to see if we know it. Leverage is a term we did not talk about, nor is influence. Um, I'll mention them after we do the last question. I'll just explain if anyone's wondering. <laughs> if anyone's wondering, I'll explain it. 
to look for outliers and check the equal variance assumption, a what should be created. So what do we create to look for outliers and look at the equal variance, which is the plot does not thicken. This is another term for plot does not thicken, which is equal variance. What do we create to look at this, to look at, to see if there's outliers, to see if plot is thickening. We make a residual plot, boom, residual plot. Notice you don't even have to look at their answers because you know it's residual plot. You don't got to look at their tricks. You know it's a residual plot. This is to see if normality of residuals, histograms, you can look at normality, but the answer is residual plot. Um, if you saw the uh, the influential points, how many, this is off test. I'm just going to tell you it real quick. It's a quick and easy concept. You will not be tested on this. So people, I'll say, look, the video is going to go right now. Also, I finished the quiz. That's another reason too. But um, what does it mean for something to be, um, to have leverage? I want us to say, this is the way I teach it in 320. So the concept of leverage is the following. I'm going to invite my little cousin out, Tolliver, to play on a teeter-totter. So here's little little Tolliver. He's Tolliver is four years old now. There's Tolliver. And here's here's uh, Uncle Brian. We got to draw him over here. Here's Uncle Brian. Okay. He's smiling on his face. What are you going to Uncle Brian? So um, we got Uncle Brian right there. We need to select Uncle Brian. Okay. So here's Uncle Brian. And Uncle Brian is going to, <laughs> this is great, <laughs> it's an anime video. So we go right here, and Uncle Brian's going to, he's just gonna, he's just gonna sit on the seesaw here, just sit on the seesaw. And what's gonna happen if he just, well one, the seesaw's probably, if you've ever like, you know, you think about if you're a small child, I probably need to sit over here, right? So Brian needs to just sit on the seesaw, because Brian right here has as much leverage as Tolliver, but Brian's a bigger individual, so the seesaw's really gonna go flying. But Brian decides to play a joke, and we need something over here. This is not a nice joke, Brian. Don't be mean. Brian decides to play a joke, and he sets up a, a high dive over here. So there's a high dive over here. So with the high dive, let's go get Brian. Brian goes up here. No, not the... Really? With the high dive over here, Brian gets on the high dive, and he jumps off onto the seesaw here. What's going to happen to Tolliver? I wish I could select Tolliver. But Brian gets on the high dive right here and jumps off onto it. He's landing from a height up here, and he's going to fall down on the seesaw. How much is he going to influence this seesaw? A lot or a little? He's going to fly off. Now, Tolliver's going to do a joke on Brian, though. Tolliver, he gets smart, and he says, okay, you, you jumped this time, but I want you to jump right here on the seesaw. So now Brian jumps. Poof, right on the seesaw right here just jumps on the seesaw what's the seesaw going to do if i jump right on the middle of it if i jump right on the middle of the seesaw what's the seesaw going to do what's it going to do if you jump right on the middle of a seesaw anything nothing so what you've been noticing right here is what we call leverage we have the same thing going on with a uh, regression when you do a regression let's just do a really nice regression right here you get a line now the fulcrum of that line is right about here. This would be the mean of the x's. So I have x bar right here. What does that mean? That is like the balancing point. Now it's not always like in the middle. You can have counter examples of this where maybe you have uh, data that looks like this right here. There's a lot of data here. So the mean of the x's on this might be something like right here. That would be the mean of the x's. It's not always visually in the middle. It's just that there's some outliers over here. The mean of the x's is right here because you'd average get all the points. I'm just doing a nice and neat one where it's easier to see that the mean of the x's is kind of, it's in the center of the graphic and it's the, the average of all the x's. So that's the mean of the x's. Now for something to have leverage, something gets more leverage. Yeah, send me that. No, send me it. I'll fix it, Jared. Good question. Appreciate that, Jared. 20 points, Jared, right there. So leverage is, so leverage is a component of influence. We'll get to influence in a second right here. So leverage is how far you are away from the mean of the X's. I wish I could do like a, a highlighter that got darker as I went across because the further you are away from the mean of the X's, the more leverage you have. So the further you are away, the more leverage you have, but that also means the further you are away in the negative sense. So something that is this far away right here would have equal leverage to that. Like points right here have equal leverage as the other ones. So just so you can see, you can see the green a little bit there. So leverage is a matter of degree where things right here at the mean of the X's have how much leverage? 
things right here at the mean of the x's have how much leverage? None. And that literally, if you think about this, this relates to the, my Pearson question, which this maybe helps you understand why when you put this right here, it's at the average of the x's and it has no leverage. So when your seesaw was flat, it tried to pull it in this direction and it didn't change the line at all. It had no influence. So this is going to branch into the idea of influence here in a second. So now we get into what is in, what is influence. Well, there's one more concept we need to know before we talk about influence, and that is residual. You say, Brian, we already know residual. So we already know what a residual is, but now I'm going to expand upon it. I'm going to call it a deleted studentized residual. And I'm going to try not to talk about it that much here. A del I don't want to tell you that much. I'll tell you really quickly. A deleted studentized residual is the idea of this. We have a, we have a line and we have data. And maybe there's a point that is right here. Let me put that point in red. And so now this is the line with the point and this is the line without the point. So, and I need to erase that one point. I can almost do it perfectly. Okay. So what you're noticing right here is we have the residual calculated here for how far it is away from its line but then this is a, um, so I'm trying to trace down to, I did the best I could. D, we could put a D for deleted, but we call this a deleted residual and studentized means it's been standardized. I'm not going to go deep into that topic, but you, you do the line without the point. That's what it means deleted. So the black line right there is a line made from the data without that point. Does that make sense? Zulon right here. I'm going way outside the class this is my last little bit of fun right here, but the residual is how far is the line away from the prediction? And then a deleted residual is how far is the line away from a prediction made without it? So the black line right here, why we call it a deleted residual is because we're making a line that doesn't have the influence of that one point. So what we get right here is this is the thing's deleted residual. Now let's do a really good concept right here. Here you go. You ready? I should have kept that on the screen. Sure. Um, I'm going to redraw it. Yeah. I'm not pressing the reset on the one. Just no, no. And that's the delete is over. Okay. Um, I want to make a point right here, Zulon, and I want you to tell me what is this point's residual? What is this point's residual? What is that point's residual? That point I made really big right there. What is this point's residual? What is this residual? Its residual is what? 100 points. Well, yes, in notation, it's E, but numerically, what is its residual? What is its numeric value of its residual? It's right on the line, zero. You got it, 100 points right there. Nice job, Zulon. Um, it is zero. If I were to remove that point, what would it? What? would how would it change the line? How would it influence the line by removing it? And hint, I didn't redraw my line when I put it on there. How would it change the line if, when I, if I remove it and then I make a new line? It was nothing. So what is this point's deleted residual? It's right on the line. It's deleted residual is the same as it's, and that's a unique one because it doesn't change the line. But that means it gets us to the final thing right here. What is influence? Influence, and this is not an actual equation I solve. Influence is a function of deleted studentized residual and studentized just means it's been standardized and times to some degree, not literally times, but by its leverage. But I write it this way for a reason when I teach 320, because there are two in there are two instances when something has no influence on the line. And what do we mean influence? We mean it changes the slope. There's two instances and we talked about them right here when something has no influence. And what are those two instances? What are those two instances when something would have no, no influence on the line? What are those two instances when something would have no influence? And once again, you would not solve this equation I've written. 
the two instances are when it's on the line, which means it has no deleted studentized residual, or when it's at the mean of the x's. So its leverage would be zero. That's the mean of the x's right there, and it has no leverage. So you could double you could double that concept if you had both of these where it had exactly you know like double no influence. I mean, still that would be this right here. That'd be something on the line at the mean of the x's. And I want you to think about something that would be really influential. Let's do this, and this is really great. Like we're way beyond this class right now. Um, let me put a green dot, a red dot, and a space pen bot. Now, which dot right here would be the most uh, influential on the plot? There's an easy answer to this. I would like this as a, I'd love this as a test question. And I probably, if I did it as a test question, I'd probably put the green dot over here. This is a good test question. It's the green. Because the green by far has the most leverage. And it probably even beats out the studentized residual of this one. If you look at, and that that's its residual. This is its residual right here, which I'm not going to calculate a student as res, deleted studentized residual by hand. I've got software that does that for me. But just in terms of leverage, its leverage is way bigger than this one. Like there's that one's leverage, which is tiny. This one has mod the moderate leverage and moderate residual but um and we don't know the deleted residual unless we remake the line like we'd have to remake the green line so in truth it, they'll go away from it the green line would probably go like this if we remade it a green line would probably go like this I'll just erase everything. that'd probably be the green line so this one would have a deleted studentized residual of this and it's some function that you're not literally going to times together the two values, but because it obviously has the most leverage, it obviously has the most deleted studentized residual. And it's very easy to do this in code. Um, in code, you just go over here. And like, once you know the concepts, you can just run it. Well, you're gonna have to look at the plot. You just go here to influence plot. And do we not have right class on? Whoops. No, oh, oh. influence plot. There we go. Object M not found. I didn't make my model. Must have, oh, I had deleted my environment. Cool. Go down here, influence plot. And here's the influence plot. So if you notice, uh, the two things on this influence plot are the leverage. So everything right here with zero leverage or close to zero is on the mean of the line. And here's the deleted studentized residual. Last question of the day, and then I'll take some other ones. What percent of deleted studentized residuals would you expect to be between negative two and two for de deleted studentized residuals. What percent of deleted studentized residuals would you expect to be between negative two and positive two? You'll notice we already know these things. If you take like another clash, like, oh, wait a minute, we did that. I know that. Who knows for 100 points? It might only be you here, Zulon. It's Friday. <laughs> 95, you got that 100 points. Thank you for staying this whole time here, Zulon. And you knew it because you're like, wait a minute. If you notice, it's, it would be really, look at this. This one is ridiculous. This point right here has a, um, a deleted studentized residual of negative six something. That is ridiculous. And it's way away from the mean of the data. And it's very low. So when you look at it, we can probably identify it. Um, it tells us the numbers, but we're looking for a point that's very away from the mean and very low from the, from the model. So we go to visualize model and we take a look and we need a point I think we see it. I think we see it. I think it's this person down here. This person is very low from what the model says they should be at. And they're far away from the mean of the data. They're super, they're one of the, if you look, we've got these points going down right here in this line. All these points right here would have the same leverage. So we should see four points over them. They'd have the same leverage because they're the same distance away from the mean. So all these four points have the same leverage. So let's see if we have four points over them. That'll confirm they're that point. And I think we do. Yeah, there they are. There's the four points over them. One, two, three, four. If you notice this person right here, they have the same leverage, but this person's going to be closer to the line. So this person right here, which has very small influence, the size of the circle is the influence. So this person, the highest up person is going to be right at the line. Then we're going to see four dots going down. Let's go to our graphic. Let's identify that spot again. Here's the four individuals. And that person right there is very close to the line. So we were able to identify that this is the individual right here that is having the most influence on the line itself. And what that's what influence means. It means it's influencing the line in a certain direction. And the X on the circle means it has undue influence. Like we don't, 
it's it's really way more influential than we would want it to be. So these are the most highly influential points that are kind of turning, like controlling our regression. So we can actually get a numeric measure of the influence it's having on the regression model itself. And what do we want? QQ straight enough, no outliers plot doesn't thicken. This is an issue with these four points mostly attributed to these two points right here. These two points are drastically pulling down our model because they'll kind of have like a gravitational pull towards the model. Does that make sense right there? On the question that starts with 100. Yes, let's do it. Alyssa, you got it. Thank you, Alyssa. Um, there we go. That was well beyond the class. So um, I'll, I'll need to mark that in the video. It says the 100 years. So if you guys can't tell, I love this stuff. I love this stuff. Ah, oh, um, you don't have jump. Okay, let me try and I might need to update the regression solver. Let me do it with the regression solver and see if it works in that. We're going to check the regression solver. Let's check. Checking the regression solver here, modules. And do, do you have the regression solver, Alyssa? Um, oops, I'm in the wrong class. Oh, we need to put music. Go to the regression solver and see. Why can't I find modules? There they are. I should keep them in the same spot every semester, lest I lose my mind. Mega Man, not more than just Mega Man. Just load it up. Regression solver is, if people were wondering, right here. There's the regression solver, so we got it. Regression solver, open up. Download, open the regression solver. Do, 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 do. We got the regression solver. Okay, so here's what I was concerned about. Now I might need to update it. Wait, this is the old regression solver. Uh oh, wait a minute. Am I in the wrong class? I think I am. I think I am. Spring 20. Yep. In the wrong class. Wait. Oh. Too many classes. Oh, so they didn't get the new regression solver. So when, no wonder I couldn't find modules. <laughs> I was so confused. Let me listen to Punch Out again. So here we go. Regression solver 2.1 right here. We got it. And I do update these things. I try to make it easier for you guys to solve. So here we are. Here's the regression solver 2.1. And then let me see something right here. Um, I think I might need to make another update. So let's check this out. All right. Do we need to use software or Excel functions on the exam? Nope. Nope. You won't need to use. So the fan actually turned on the computer. R rare to hear that. So you open Excel. Who needs to think? Um, you don't need to use the on the exam. And let me go to the question. Hope I didn't close that out. Question, questions. So here's the question. We need to copy the data. We need to copy the clipboard. And I'm gonna see if this is working properly. Now, one of the biggest things is you have to make sure you have the data in the right spots. If you put the data in the wrong spots, it won't work properly. So, uh, you too, Jack. Good, good seeing you here. Um, let me see what this is doing. Oh, I solved that elsewhere. Really? Where's K18? Oh, the calculation area. Why do I like doing things like this? Okay. Okay, that'll work. Oh, did I just ma mess it up? I did. Good. That looks to all be correct. Okay, here. Yes, it, it is correct now. I think I did extend this. Um, what am I looking at right now, just so everyone knows, is um, right here, this is the amount of values it can take. I think it has enough room for all the my Pearson problems. I, I remembered updating this. But I'm looking at in the top right here that it'll do C15. It goes well beyond the yellow. Because when I first made this, um, and I think it has enough, you can do like 185 values. So if you were to put in something way, way long, it wouldn't do it. 
and it does extend well beyond the yellow. Maybe I should make the yellow go longer, but when I first made it, I didn't put in enough room, and then, yeah, so that's a problem. Let me look at the other formulas. That's right. That's right. That's right. I'm looking at the numbers right here to make sure it contains enough values um, to calculate everything. So I think everything here is calculated correctly. I was worried. This does work as far as I've seen because I created it. That doesn't mean it'll work. Um, so what I'm going to do usually is I like to um, I like to click this and move it back over here. Can't see that. Secret areas. Um, we're trying to predict the average speed, which we need to select all of this. And we're predicting the average speed. And you put this right here. You have to put it in the Y. So that needs to go in the Y. And make sure, as you see, that when you do this, you paste it over the Y. I want to make that very clear that I'm pasting over the Y. Don't paste it here. You have to paste the name of the Y in the name of the Y column. Then when you go to year, the values have to be in the yellow field. Now, it will replace the yellow field, but you're going to see year appear in the X right there. And that will solve everything for you. So you can see right here, we get the intercept of the following, and we get the slope of the following. So make sure to round it the way my Pearson wants it. And there it is. So let's see if we got it right. 266.38, 266.38, and 0.15. You got it. Awesome. Great job. Thank you, Alyssa, for asking that right there. Yeah, always, whenever you see me working on stuff, you could have, don't worry, if I'm doing some crazy thing like teaching what influence leverage and deleted studentized residuals are, you can say, hey, I'm stuck on this problem. You know, I'll jump to your problem um, because I was just kind of having some little bit of fun of, I, I, you know, I like these topics. People know that about me too well. They're like, ah, he's having fun. He's just talking the stats stuff. So um, this, this topic, I think everyone knows is not in our class. We... The questions, I think, you know, it helps. It's like, if you know calculus, it helps you with other things like, or linear algebra. If like, you know, linear algebra, that can help you with calculus because you can do calculus with linear algebra. Um, so all that good stuff right there. And great job on the points, everyone. Amazing work. You guys did really well. I think we're going to think we're gonna be done for Friday now. If anyone has any other questions, I'll be sending out reminders. Where are you at, Streamlabs? Got a 100 on the quiz and the homework. Yes, and you got, you're, you're almost halfway to the total max points in the class. So keep it up. I bet you got some, you got a bunch of points today, Morgan. So you're, you're there cause you got like the 200. So Morgan, amazing work. I got to come down with these points. I'm trying to like, I like giving out points and I like making them a little bigger as the semester goes on, but I got to watch out cause the max is like 3000 for all the extra credit. And so you guys are doing great. Keep it up. Keep working hard. Keep taking notes. And I guess, is there any last questions? You guys got so much extra credit today. So much extra credit. There'll be some new graphics, hopefully, and everything on Monday. You're welcome, Zulon. Thank you, guys. I, I really mean that. Um, I, I know I keep saying thank you to you guys, but and gals and everybody. Um, so you guys, my New York right there. Going to lunch now. Enjoy some lunch. I was like, wait, now I want lunch. Um, but I'm probably saying this like five people watching the end of this video, but it really is the hard work of, of everyone who's like, this mini term, you guys have been doing great. Mini term's such a quick, quick thing. But everyone's working really hard. Um, grades are amazing. And even if they weren't amazing, I'd still be rooting for you guys. You're still I'm still there for you. I'm there to help you out and to kind of keep I'm the sail, I'm the captain of the ship. And you guys are the crew. Captain needs his crew. You guys are awesome. Captain Jack, we got this. Until next time, this is Captain Jack Stevens signing out. Bye everybody.